and drop it. There you go. Hey, Craig. What's going on, Craig? So you finally got in here the first time? He's learning. The robots are adapting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another fantastic, wonderful, and splendiferous episode. Awe inspiring. Awe inspiring. We are on episode Spectacular. eight, baby. Flabbergasting. So first and foremost, how the hell are you, bud? Oh, uh, you know, living in hell every day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, besides the hell, man. Come on. Oh man, it's normal shit. Then I mean, I, I like that we're at the fact where we could just look past hell. You, I mean, you got to. That's American history. I mean, it's not like you said. I mean, you like the point that we're at the fact we've been at that point. <laughs> Yeah, no, so it's like I'm kind of just numb to the pain at this point. Yeah, hey, man. Oh, you do what you got to do, man. You know what'll help you? You know what'll help you deal with that pain? Drugs? Yeah, bes- besides that, though. Uh, oh. I was going to say the Dipset versus the Locks versus Battle. Yeah, that definitely <laughs> ate away a chunk of the uh, the old Hell Sphere. Um, yo, I'm not gonna lie. So heading into this battle, it was tough for me because um I I was sure Dipset was gonna win going into the battle. Yeah, I had so my mind made up. My thing was I wanted Dipset to win. I'm a fan of Dipset, I'm a fan of Locks too. I mean, I grew up on both of their songs, but it was kind of one of those things that during the battle, I'm talking like two, three songs in, I was like, Oh yeah, this okay. ain't going their way at all. Okay, I see you, it was one of them verses where you could just it's not even close, you could just immediately tell. It's like yeah. the Simpsons video. Stop, stop. He's already dead. <laughs> Literally, I'm talking like two or three songs. And I was just like, oh, yeah, it's a difference. It's going to, okay, it's going to be a difference all night. To the point to where niggas was booing Dipset towards the end. And I was just like, but only they was, <laughs> I think they were only booing him just because like, like Dipset and them niggas was terrible sports. You know what I mean? Like the whole event, they were terrible sports. Like Jada and them talked they shit. But when they heard songs they liked, they shut the fuck up and just bopped to them. You know what I mean? But, like, Cam and them was just dicky, you know, every song, every yeah. song I had to hate on. Like, what the fuck is this, the army? What, we in the army? I'm like, bro, it's Mighty D Block. Come on, bro. You know this shit hitting hard. This nigga said, fuck, is we in the army? Fuck out of here. I was screaming, you know. But, uh, no, nah, I definitely I definitely didn't see Chips like, getting washed like this. Like, Yeah, washed, no, washed. not at all. No, this was... No, I just no. But I think no. it goes to show. It goes to show, like, it because we saw this the first time. Uh, Jada. I was gonna say it goes to show. Jada Kiss is the best rapper alive. Uh, I mean, dude, it's kind of hard to argue with, it, right? Uh, and it's one of those things where, like, think about it. Like, there's not too many people who would list Jada Kiss as their favorite rapper. But when you think about Jada's impact and and, and everything Jada has given to the coach. It's like, dog, how can Jada is is easily a goat? Like, no matter how you slice it, he yeah. did real songs with Big, no made up shit, and he's still bridging the gap between the new street niggas, the old. So you know what I mean? Like, it's because it's like certain niggas. Like, for example, like I always said it, and I said this during the the, the Jeezy and the um Gucci, Gucci versus right. I personally feel like. That one was just the who who do you prefer, right? Because to me, yeah. Gucci probably wins just because he has the longer term, right? Like if you stop both of their catalogs in like 2012, you'd probably have or 2010. You know what I'm saying? You'd probably have Jeezy ahead because Jeezy had all the hits and all the other shit. But then when you get to a certain part where it's Gucci like just dog, kept going. Yeah, it's like, bro, what has Jeezy job since like 2015? You know, in the last five years, what I mean, bangers have we basically retired, from, didn't he? Yeah, right. Which I'm not faulting nobody for, because, I mean, a lot of these rappers are realizing the money ain't in rap. It's in all the other shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Let's say you put your heart, you know, sweat and tears into an album. You sell it, and when it's all said and done, the album makes, like, a mil. And then you sign a business deal for, like, 500000 And the business deal took you, like, three days, a week. <laughs> and you're just like, okay. All right. Yeah, that's why I, I was watching an interview with Vince Stables, and he was talking about the process he goes through to make music. And mm-hmm. he don't make music to sell records. He makes music for it to get picked up by movies and video games, because that's where the real money is. This nigga was talking about all the songs that he made that ended up getting put in movies, some shit. He said he had a song that the U.S. military picked up. They never used right, it, Vince but they picked song. it up. 
Yeah, how, like so. How Call does of that Duty, even work out? <laughs> like they, it's like they buy the leasing rights to the song, so they buy it with the intention of using it, I guess. But they never use it, so he get paid even if they don't use the song. He said Call of Duty bought two songs from Call of Duty. He said, I think he said like one of the Fast and the Furious movies. He said FIFA picked up some songs from him. And so he said he basically revamped his whole process of making music around getting shit picked up by the industry. And think that... about that Paul Walker song that Wiz Khalifa made. Mm-hmm. That, shit, yeah, 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 yeah. that shit. How much money do you think he made off of that shit? Yeah, I and mean, I don't like that song at all. Think about it. One of the earlier examples we saw that a couple of years a while back was um the all gold everything, right? Once yeah. Bruno Mars picked that up, dog, that nigga Trinidad James ain't had to make he ain't had to make another song a day in his life. Yeah, sure didn't. And mind what you, was the name of that song? Uptown Funk. Yeah, all the work yeah. you put in, all the mixtapes you dropped, all the shit you was doing, and literally a bar, a bar from one of your songs did it. Not the yeah. whole song, nigga. Just the bar. <laughs> and the rest. So that's that's the nutty part to me. But um, yeah, I mean, at this point, listen. I mean, I think it, it's time that we have we put, we got to put Jada up there. I mean, with the you know, uh, listen. I don't know who it wasn't already. Like it was one of those things where, like, when I had a top five rappers, I usually didn't like, have Jada in there. Like, yeah, it's like you know, know Jada yeah. is good, but it's just I'm not listening to the nigga every day. Same thing with Jay Z. Like I know this nigga is one of the best rappers alive, but I don't have him on my main playlist. I listen to more Jay Z than I listen to Jada. And the other thing, yeah, definitely. the edge that I would give Jada though is I think that Jada is still making good music. I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. 444 was good from Jay Z. That was good. I haven't heard anything good after that. Just gonna be quite frank. Like the singles I heard, the 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 song he did with Pharrell for like the the. the what was that? The um Fred Hampton soundtrack. He did a song with Nas talking about cryptocurrency and shit. I'm like, yo, what? What are we? Oh, doing? what? He yes, did a, he has song a song with Nas, Nas about cryptocurrency. Yeah, I think it's on GJ Khaled's album, if I'm not mistaken, because Khaled's in the video. Oh, I did hear about that. Yeah, yeah right. And it's just that. and Nas had a good verse, and even Jay Z's verse was alright. But it's just like, dog. At this point, I don't. I feel like I'm tired of Jay Z because it's like he's he's a little too far up to still be rapping to me and he's not talking to me anymore you get what i'm saying like it, yeah. like it's like i don't know who you rapping to you just that rapping nigga's to rapping me. to black millionaires he's rapping to other rappers i, I guess so yeah he's yeah, rapping about so. shit that's way over our collective broke heads and, and the thing that killed me niggas like oh you just don't understand i'm like no no, no i get it you're just not talking to me like if you're not exactly. talking to me why would i keep why would i listen yeah like it's not it's not a matter of i don't get it no i get it it's it's bag talk only thing is you talking about bags i'm not i can't reach so what do I do with this? You know what I'm it's saying? Like they from Migos and little baby talk about a bag. They millionaires. Yeah, and the bags they're talking about is a couple hundred thousand. You know what I'm yeah, saying? They're talking about ten million dollar bags. Oh, I'm out the combo. Yeah. Shit, fuck ten million dollars. That nigga talking about fucking hundred million dollar bags. I'm like, I probably won't see a hundred million in my entire life. You said probably. You still holding that hope? I ain't hating. I'm just I'm just asking. I mean, I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be a millionaire. I don't know about hundred million. Yeah, you know, I, I seen um this weekend. I was watching this shit about like lottery winners that um met some untimely demises. Um, and this shit was wild, bro. Like I couldn't, but like there was one word like dude, untimely, like they got murdered, or untimely, like just some absolutely bad well, shit. Insane shit happened it, and they died. It was a little bit of both, right? Like I think. One of them was like a suicide. One of them was a disappearance, and the rest were murders. Um, but, and I think it was like three murders. I would uh, probably consider one, that one, one, disappearance. One. Either that nigga just got the fuck off the grid and went to a different country, or he got murdered and they never found the body. Yeah, yeah, it might have been that. But um, there were some wild ones, right? Like there was one where dude, uh, this nigga won four hundred thousand in lottery winnings, right? Uh, after taxes, this nigga came home with like two and two and some change. I want to say, like, it sounds about right. 200,000, some shit like that. And niggas poisoned this nigga and killed him over 200 racks. I'm like, bro. Not even I, like 200 million. 200 grand, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, dog, that's not even enough to put a down payment on the house. What you... Like, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, we've seen niggas get killed for less, right? Like, niggas have historically died for literally nothing, right? So it's never surprising when someone dies for any price because people die for free. Uh, But it's just like, dog, like, we're not even talking... The big shit, right? Because there were some other ones where, like, there was a dude who won eleven milli 
he was mad generous with his money. He just kept giving his money out to everybody. He was just, he was one of them dudes. He went to church and all this shit. He was a good dude, right? Problem is, when you a good dude, you got all these niggas around you. Niggas just be happy, walk up with their hand up. And so, mm-hmm. literally, this nigga got 11 million. They broke down a list of shit he did. He bought like six houses for family members, bought his stepfather or stepson a house, bought like his nieces and nephews money, put money in a trust. Nigga did everything, right? Mad money. And he was on the annuity. I think he was getting like, um, what the fuck was he getting? He was like one point something a year. He was getting some stupid shit uh, for, with the annuity, but he was just giving mad money out. And it literally got to a point where like this nigga is just like, bro, I hate this shit. This shit whack. Like nobody around friend no more. Like niggas just want money from me. This yeah. shit boring. This shit corny. Nigga wife left. And the worst part is nigga wrote a suicide note. Left. And then in his suicide note, he was just like, I wish I could turn all the money. I just wanted you. And I was like, damn. You that's hate crazy. You fucking see it. Yeah, no. That's that's fucking insane. Like, you and, know, and always, because, like, you know, you, you always hear the old shit, like, uh, you know, like, money can't solve your problems. And it's like, I get it to a degree, right? Like, I understand that, like, for example, like, if I'm having family issues, me getting money ain't going to solve that. If anything, no. it, might, it might make it worse. It probably will make it worse. As right? shown exhibit A. Right, exhibit A, as uh, exhibit B, C, every nigga in this one. Um, but to me, it's just like I just can't imagine. And again, again, I'm I'm just speaking from I can't imagine. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I just saying I can't imagine being up with that much money after where I've been and and thinking about even thinking considering yeah. ending it all. Like I can't that part I can't fathom. Then it right. was he was too nice. It was too. What I would have did was if I had let's take that exact amount, eleven million. I would have just fucking, I would have gathered all my family. I would have appointed somebody to be in charge. I'm going to say, look here, I'm taking six mil. I'm going to give y'all five. This person's in charge. If y'all got any questions, you go to them. They dispersing it. And I'm just taking myself out of it. If you mad, talk to them. Don't even call me. Especially yeah, if you like you know, extended you know, that ain't. That ain't, that ain't going to fully work. Because let's be real. Here. Like You got the money, right? And say so you delegate me. To hand out the money to niggas, niggas gonna come to me and I'm like, man, fuck out of here. No, you can't get two hundred thousand. I give you thirty k, right? That's the best I got. And then the nigga mad. You really think he not gonna go over my head and go to you? Of course he will. Why wouldn't he? He's just gonna ignore me and say, yo, look, bro, I really need blah blah boo boo boo. And I think the hard, the biggest issue is like you said, it's just saying no to niggas because yeah. everyone's gonna i mean let's be real if my man's won 11 million i'm going to come to him with a dumbass idea too i promise you i will if you win 11 million i'm gonna come ah p p p p so y'all ate cookies before right let me put a hundred thousand in doge <laughs> he said no 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 hold on <laughs> frozen cookies mm. how about mm. this one mm. hot yogurt he said Peanut butter cheeseburgers. Hmm? Now, hold mm-hmm. on now. Come I've on now. actually had a peanut butter cheeseburger, and it's actually good. He said, I'm going to open a chain of all peanut butter cheeseburgers. Speaking Just of peanut which, butter burgers. I heard, about this place, I heard about this place that sell peanut butter and jelly wings. I've heard of that. Um, I, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it, because... I know working in my ice cream job, I've seen like I've seen certain foods that look disgusting come out amazing. Like so, I've I'll seen. To, I'll try anything. We had a what was it? It was like a, a Tuscan peanut butter and jelly flavor for gelato, and literally it was you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on a baguette, right? Like follow. Where's the ice cream coming? With? <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm getting there. <laughs> you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the baguette, cut it in half. And then you take a um, a food processor and you basically you blend it all up, blend it day. all down, right? Yeah, and mm. then you mix it with the milk and all the other shit that goes into mm. goes in. And I, I gotta tell you, when I was looking at it, it looked foul, like foul. I was just like, I don't like so this. You basically make the ice cream from scratch. You take the mm-hmm. milk and the cream and mix it with the. Yeah, they would, they, the only thing that would, it was like a powder, like they had, and so the powder was, uh, but it was like base powder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they had uh, gelato. They had um, damn, what were the three bases? It was aqua, was like the water based ones. Um, I forgot the other ones. It was all in Italian, so I, I don't. You know what I mean? None of it was English. 
I just, you know, you just got to learn Italian. And eventually at some point, you're like, oh, yeah, stretch and tell her. Yeah, 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 for sure. Stretch and tell But, um, yeah, no, so, like, seeing that, I've seen nasty shit come out good. So it's like, peanut butter and jelly wings could work. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around what the fuck this tastes like. Like, does each wing, like, is, is there a peanut butter like, wing and then a jelly wing? Is that how I it I don't know. It, it might be. So, like, I know they don't actually put peanut butter and jelly on wings. It's just the flavor of the wing. Yeah. But I'm trying to figure out, like, how do they get the essence of pe- Like, what seasoning could you possibly use to get <laughs> peanut butter and jelly on meat? Like, yeah, would that... Yeah. Just- yeah, like, would you dehydrate some grapes and then grind it up into powder and you got grape yeah, powder? Like, uh, and yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, now, the no peanuts, problem. that's a little bit easier. I can understand how you can make some yeah, yeah, peanuts. peanuts easy. Yeah. That's easy. It's just interesting what niggas do for food. Uh, do with food. I mean, not for food. Because niggas oh, yeah, are doing, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll kill a nigga over a sandwich if I'm hungry enough. <laughs> you say, well, what's that? That's a panini? Oh, yeah, look, bro. Yeah, go Give out it back. up. Yeah, go out back. <laughs> you say, go out back or I'm going to do it here. It's up to you. Either way, I'm getting this panini. <laughs> I'm getting this goddamn sandwich. I want bro. this panini. I well, like you and I want you. <laughs> but yeah, nah, this shit, I mean, it's actually crazy the the food that niggas come up with. I feel like sometimes it, it not sometimes. I feel like a lot of times it goes too far. I'm just like, bro, are y'all bored? Are y'all bored? Just figure out like take some classics and, and, oh. <laughs> and just make them shits good, okay? Like just go back I to follow this chili. IG page that fucking um they make like Food on a molecular level, like they literally take chemicals like and turn it into food. They call uh, it um, molecular yeah, yeah, like gastronomy. Cool. Like they fucking, they take like these different chemicals molecular and they take that, different though? stuff. Like they made pizza in like a a water soluble pouch, and it had all the taste and everything of pizza, and it's like in a clear pouch, a clear what edible pouch. What are you saying? <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's just uh, no, I'll send you to the link I, after I, I'm this. I'm listening. It's, it's just like what are you they literally take about? just different <laughs> chemicals and water, and they mix the shit together and make different foods. I seen these niggas make uh, dumplings. With I'm seeing them make pizza. I seen them make edible water, where it's like a a bubble of water, like you bite into and you can eat water. I'm looking at it. What is this? Did you find the page already? No, I'm just Google searching molecular gastronomy. What <laughs> the fuck is this? What niggas, is this? Niggas do some wild shit with food. Dog, dog. All right, all right. So I, the, the wild shit I had in my head was like niggas just, you know, remember when they were talking about like the maggot burgers and all that other shit? Yeah. Um, which don't get me wrong. Look, I'm on I'm on the fence about it. Um, one, listen, it's maggots everywhere. So like we we, we should start eating them. I get it. Two, um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like feeding me maggots in any form is the first step to serve, servitude. Like I feel like there's no way you go back. Like I have to be a yeah, serf nah. from here, fear here, here for Like I'm, I'm gonna be. I just I have a stigma for maggots. Like I, I get it. They're everywhere. It's an abundant. It's probably a good source of protein too. But flies are disgusting creatures that eat shit. And whenever you see maggots, they're usually on shit or in a garbage can. I don't even care if you have these maggots in a sterile environment. Dogs lick asses. I mean, some cultures eat dogs, but that's neither here nor there. I probably tried dog once or twice. I used to hate when niggas like, yo, this Chinese food is horse meat. I'm like, shh, sea biscuit hit. eh, I've actually had horse meat before. It's good. Is it tough? I would imagine it's tough as hell. It's it's not super tough. It's stringy. Okay. Dry. I've had a lot of a uh, weird a lot of meats. muscular striation. I had alligator before. I know you had alligator, probably. Yeah, I had gator. I had it's alligator like nuggets. Alligator. That shit was rocking. Yeah. Have you had a shark? Uh, I've had swordfish. No, no, sh- not shark though. Shark I didn't like swordfish very... actually. I like most fish as long as they're not bones, and I don't want to work for my food. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing for me. I'm like, yo, listen, our our, our parents and our grandparents suffered, so we no longer have to, right? Yeah, so I'm not like, eating none with don't, bones. Like, to me, any food that requires you to work for it is, is a waste. Any food of, that of could time. potentially kill you from a microscopic bone fragment should not be ingested. I'm not eating flounder, 
snapper. What other fish got bones in it? Trout. Keep it away from me. Keep the bones away from me. I get violently angry whenever I'm eating catfish and whoever made it didn't get all the bones out. And they always be that one big joint too. Like yeah, it'd be always. a bunch of small ones that you could just chew through, and then it'd be that one slapper. It just like <laughs> <laughs> it's just in, it's in the throat. You in the danger zone. Fuck, what was I gonna say about the cat? Um, I can't even remember. Catfish is rocking now. I've had catfish a couple times. Um, oh yeah, catfish is insane. Yeah, escargot. Um, escargot. What's that? Snail? Nah, I yeah. have escargot. I had uh, a little you, eggs. Is that caviar? I had that shit. That shit is garbage. Fish eggs. Yeah. That shit is. Stinks. I don't know all the ins and outs of caviar. I know. I think the black ones are caviar. But yeah, and then like the I had the, the, uh, the orange, orange ones. ones. Yeah, it's another name. The orange ones go great like, on sushi, but I don't know. It's not like technically uh, caviar. I was like, man, I don't care about the divisions you I think it's because the orange ones are unfertilized and caviar had a fish come on them. So I think rich it's, uh, figures eating fertilized fish. <laughs> no, I th- I th- I'm pretty sure I looked into this once and it was um, <laughs> the difference between it was just different fish. Like uh, caviar is specific to a specific species of fish. I think we covered this on the first episode, actually. Didn't like, caviar is specific to spur- certain species of fish. So the orange ones come from a species that's not like within the caviar range. So it's not caviar, but it's literally caviar. Yeah, you know I mean, what? like it's it's fish eggs, nigga. Like fish. I wonder eggs is what caviar. fish do rich people determine? Like, who decided this is a high elegant oh, fish that we get fish eggs from? Well, remember, right? Like when you look at the history of like food and a lot of different cultures, it just shifts. It just depends on what's available and what's not available. Like back in the day, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, lobster, crab, all that shit was considered like fucking low grade food. Like that's what the peasants eat. I mean, shit, it should still be, in my opinion. I love yeah, some lobster crab and shrimp. Of They're course, bottom feeders. But go see how much some Dungeness crab legs cost right now. Oh, I know. I, yeah. I just right. bought scallops a, oh, yeah, a couple yeah, of weeks ago. Know. It was fifty dollars for two pounds of scallops. Mm. Great man. I mean, I I had to have them scallops. I was just craving them. I had to have them. But yeah, so I mean, when it comes to the foods, like the prices, I mean, that's pricing is just arbitrary. It's just human bullshit, right? So it's like every price yeah. is arbitrary. There is no such thing. Oh, it's really worth this number. Eh, maybe, right? Maybe, like, but like, in a lot of cases, of these foods shit just gets priced because it's priced that way. That's it. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's like, I put. Why'd you make it so expensive? I wanted to make my money back. <laughs> That's it. I put out time on the ocean trying to catch these lobsters in this lobster trap. So yeah. So what I'm about to do is spend millions to convince the media to convince y'all that this shit is for high grade niggas only. That's why it's so expensive because only high grade niggas can afford it. And then what you think? Again, this is like where psychology comes in, right? Where the high grade niggas, all the niggas with money, are groupies because so then they see one rich nigga try it. Then the next rich nigga got to try it. Then and then suddenly it's yeah. high I mean, grade it's, food. It's the same, yeah, exactly. It's the same way how you can take a, a mid tier brand and a rapper can say it, and a couple rappers can start rocking it, and suddenly that same brand can justify them hundred and ninety dollar t shirts now. A t shirts is ninety dollars just last year. Now they double their price. <laughs> Why? Because well, shit. I mean, look I got at money back yell buying my shit now. <laughs> nigga, look at Nike as a whole. Some white Air yeah, Force Ones sure. was forty dollars when I was in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. And I think even if you like include inflation and all that other shit, it still don't match up to what it is now. Yeah, no, not at all. So Nike yeah. as a whole just been ran through by the rap community. Yeah, and that's what a lot of shit. Not just the rap community though. Nike was unique in a sense. Like, think about it. They had everybody on their shit, from the athletes to the rappers to black folks to white kids to everybody. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Yeah. Nigga, who wasn't going for rock with some Nike? So of course with Nike, I think there's a little different because it wasn't like it was a class of people that it was just it was just Nike, right? Like think about it, Nike with the commercials and uh, Nike was synonymous with all them deals you getting. Your name is everywhere. That check is fucking everywhere. The swoosh is everywhere. Yeah, ain't no sure. sports you gonna watch on TV and ain't a swoosh somewhere. At least thirty niggas per day. No matter what sport, you're going to see even Tiger Woods sponsored mm-hmm. by Nike. Mm-hmm. Tennis players sponsored by Nike. 
I always think about that to myself. Like, imagine like you in a room with like Rory McElroy or some shit, and you don't know who this guy is. You've never seen him in your life, and like people are just flocking over him. Like, I always thought to myself, like, imagine like, like it's just crazy to me that there are worlds that people live in where certain celebrities like just aren't people. Like, they don't know they exist. Yeah, they don't. You know what I mean? Imagine like, not knowing who LeBron James is. Right, right, but I'm sure there's someone. Yeah, right? I'm sure there's definitely. easily someone like remember that there was like that the set of that that white lady who's sitting next to Jay Z and she's asking him who he yeah. is and all the shit. Yeah. And he gets to the end and she's like, "Wait, what's your name?" Oh, Jay Z. Oh, oh, I know of him. That's you. Yeah. Oh shit. And I'm like, sis, you ain't recognize Jay Z. But again, it's certain niggas live in different worlds. Like the I think nigga's I remember... name is just so huge. Even if she'd never seen his face before, she knows the name. Jay-Z. Oh, you're that guy. That's crazy. Damn, I ain't know. But I, I remember seeing one about a dude who did uh, some graphic design work for two artists, and he didn't even know who the artists were. I think it was like Moneybag Yo and like Lil Wayne. And I, <laughs> and I, was just... not, no, I can understand Moneybag Yo, but how the fuck you don't know who Wayne is? Yeah, I, just, I don't. But again, it, it makes sense though, right? Because in certain cases, these people get hit up at a certain time in people's career. Like when I watched that Cisco thing, right? Like the guy he got to play the violin, the guy had never fucking heard of Cisco. He'd never heard of Drew Hill. Drew Hill had three platinum albums. You get what I'm saying? So like he had no fucking clue who these people were. He was just like, oh yeah, guy named Cisco. Okay. Oh, he likes to, he likes the color of his hair and shit. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Then he gets in the studio with him, does the shit. And then literally he said like his kids put the song on. was like, yo dad, there's this crazy violin section in this song. You got to hear it. And he's his head. He's like, oh, shit. That shit sounds familiar. I think that might be my shit. Yeah, I might have did that joint. Yeah, that might have been me. But, like, that that part is always just nutty to me. Like, you dead could just be in a room with somebody and not know. Um, and it, it also shows, like, celebrity is different everywhere you go. Yeah. Because right? it's like... Celebrity, celebr- celebrities are influenced by the media that you consume. Mm-hmm. They're only big if you know who they are. And it's like, like in the other examples, like you could go certain places, and a person there that's a celebrity, just they're not, they're a nobody somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could be a celebrity in like your LA community. You know what I'm saying? Then you can go to fucking Texas and be a nobody. You know what I'm it's saying? You can go to Chicago like and be a nobody. Yeah. You can go to Florida yeah. and be a nobody. Like and you know what? New York. I'd be cool with that if I'm doing shows and I'm getting money continuously. I don't need to be big. I don't have to be a super millionaire. I'm cool with just doing shows and selling albums here. I'm making a couple hundred thousand a year. That's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. I always feel like it's it's usually ego that ends up driving niggas in the wrong direction, no matter what, right? Yeah. Even if it's you know, and in that case, it's probably it. Like you look around, looking at niggas. Well, I work harder than him. I put in more work than him. Why is he? You know what I mean? Niggas compare themselves. I mean, it happens with everybody, right? Like niggas swear that they're above these emotional gestures of weakness, right? But let's be real here. Niggas compare themselves to other niggas all the time. That's yeah, what get niggas hemmed up. That's when niggas get niggas hemmed up. Because you look around like, oh, he got the roller. He doing this. Oh, what? I remember I, somebody was talking about, um, oh, it's going to be hard to compete when you got niggas like Drake spending 10K on a dinner date. And I'm like, you niggas are competing with Drake? What are you talking about? What <laughs> You're are you not talking even about? remotely close to his tax bracket. Yeah, I was like, bro, talk to me. You're competing with me. Talk to me. Don't talk to Drake $10,000. And then when somebody broke down like what ten thousand dollars is according to his like yearly income, it was like the equivalent of like a two for twenty for a nigga like me. So I'm like, see, you see, you see what I mean? Ten thousand dollars is a lot of money to spend. So like, yes, ten thousand is always gonna look like a good gesture no matter what. But to Drake, that yeah. ten thousand ain't nothing. Exactly, exactly. Right? It's like nigga, it's like Oprah throwing five at you. That shit is nothing to her. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Won't even nothing notice there. it missing from her bank account. Uh, she'll she'll get that back within the minute. She'll get that back by the time she, she gets that to the within next, a couple yeah, seconds. By the time she gets to the next red light, she gonna have made that back, nigga. What is you talking about? It's over. That's always the other shit that uh, blows my mind, like just the scale of money. Um, because like I remember seeing that when I worked at my uh, last job, like we gave a lot of money to Africa, and out there you would see what twenty k would do. Like 20, 30K, bro, would build a whole village. Yeah. It would, like, and I'm just like, yo, this is nuts, bro. What is 20? You might not be able even to pay rent for like road. half of the year. Yeah, you yeah. can pay rent for half of the year and then 
maybe take a vacation. That's it. Like, like it ain't nothing special, dog. It ain't nothing wild. But it's just like, it's just creating and improve an entire village. And yet there are villages that haven't been improved. Like, that's just the part that blows my mind. Like, a bro, world full so of basically... billionaires and hundred yeah. billionaires. You can't send 30,000 over there. You can't send thirty thousand a month over there. What's thirty k a month to a nigga? Who, again, that's three hundred sixty k a year. I get it. Niggas a bit. Oh, you watching someone else's pockets, pro? Listen, I'm telling you like this. If I have so much money to where I can't notice three hundred thousand dollars a year coming out my account, exactly. That's been my whole argument. That's that's the difference. Like, and again, this I is hate we, that whole shit. You watching? Nigga. It's day money. They can do what they want. You're right. You're right. But if you have so much money. So much money that you could spend a million dollars a day for the rest of your life, and it wouldn't make a difference. You yeah, should be doing yeah, more with choose, that money. Yeah, and you choose to just let certain bad things around you happen. Like it's one thing if it don't happen nowhere in your. I'm not asking you to go save the fucking world, dog. I'm not asking you I to am. go to. I'm not in asking you to. Get, oh no, no, no. Yeah. No, don't. Yeah. I'm not asking you to go to Sri Lanka and save niggas in Sri. <laughs> Listen, I'm asking you. To, to, when you see this shit right here, figure out a way to, like, because that's the thing that kills me, where I'm just like, bro, like, I feel like, and again, I think there's probably a study to back that up, but I feel like broke niggas are much more willing to give money than rich niggas are. Well, they 100% are. They 100% are. Because you have less money, you have, and that's the thing, like, when I always break it down in proportions, like, you, you remember when, I think it was like Jeff Bezos or something, started like a fund for Amazon, it was like 100 million. And people were talking about, oh, this is a huge donation, blah, blah, blah. But, I was, but then people critiqued it, right? And they were like, well, one, nigga, you spent $100 million to start your own fund in your own name, right? So, like, you gave, what, $100 million to yourself? Like, 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 think about that, right? Like, one. And then, two, you still are then deciding who gets the money, who doesn't, who this, who that. And what's $100 million to a guy worth $120 billion? He might right. have been worth 120 at that point. He's over 200. Yeah, now. Right, right, sure, sure, right. But so, but that's my whole point, though, right? And that's why. And niggas, but oh yeah, well, just because he's worth 120 doesn't mean you know he has a. Bro, stop it. Stop I it, think the bro. issue is people literally don't understand how much a billion dollars is. Like it's so much money they can't wrap their minds around it. Yeah, so a, million a is nigga with one thousand uh, millions. A man one, and. That's one billion. Millions. That's one that's, billion. Yes. That's one billion. Jeff Bezos right now has over two hundred billion dollars. Yeah, two hundred billion yeah. dollars. Niggas don't get it. Niggas really do not get it. That's sorry. why I said yes. I want you to fix world hunger. He could fix world hunger and no, still he can. Have... Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking to him because he's oh, not no, going to quit. No, ass. that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm talking to him. We're not just talking about this it. guy it went to the edge of the space, man. edge of space, wasted money and said, thanks for sending me here, guys. I knew this nigga wasn't solving shit. This nigga said, listen, I'm here to fucking play Diet King until I die. So you guys Literally. figure it out. You can look at that nigga eyes and tell he's a fucking sociopath. I mean, you got to be to get that rich, bro. Come on. How else you getting there? Like he got. He said, "Thank you to the customers and to the staff at Amazon. You all made this possible." He that basically was the other said, thing. "Y'all niggas in the factory, y'all really made it possible for me to go blow my load in space, while y'all <laughs> niggas are homeless and living in cars." Thank you. And, and so the other thing was, um, Rihanna became a billionaire. Uh, I think over this week, I guess. Um, yeah, I which was that. one of those things where it's like, listen, guys, I'm sorry, I'm just at the point where. None of these are joyous occasions for me, right? Yeah. Because, yes, I know that with all this money, Rihanna, Rihanna does give back a lot. The problem is you can't be giving back that much if you're a billionaire still. That's my whole problem. That's always going to yeah. be my issue. Like, my issue is always going to be, listen, if you niggas were giving 10%, you'd be giving way more than you're giving now. And that's the problem. If you niggas gave your tithe money and called it a day, I could be mad at you, but I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? I could be mad. But I wouldn't. If you're worth a hundred thousand or hundred million, and you give ten million, okay, that's ten percent. All right, all right. I'm not too fucking mad because you got rich niggas who are worth. The, again, I think Rihanna's foundation. Again, I don't want to say the random number of my head. I want to say it was like forty something million in the last year, which is a lot of money. Like, let's that's not. A lot. That's helping niggas. Yeah, that's not. That's and that's my whole thing. Like, I need people to understand. Like, yes, I'm happy. Rich people are doing these things, but the problem is. 
you now have a world, right, where essentially the government says, all right, well, I don't want to do certain things that I'm supposed to and required to do. So I will just step back, not do it, fight for the political right to not do it. And then a billionaire is going to pick up the slack. And so that's kind of my issue where it's like we're basically getting to a point where you're going to have so many rich niggas and so many ultra broke niggas, ultra rich, ultra broke, nothing in between, right? To the point to where the only thing that determines whether you lose or win or lose is the benevolence of a rich nigga. And I, uh, granted, yeah. we're virtually already there. I was right? going to say, it's been heading towards the, the decline of the middle class for years. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's just, to me, it's like now it's like you're at a point where, it's bro, at like, the doorstep now. Yeah, yeah, like, let's be real here, nigga. Like, now you're at a point where you pretty much have to count on a billionaire. You just got to hope a billionaire somewhere cares enough about your cause specifically because it's like, dog, like I said, I just can't cheer on any black person becoming a billionaire when it's too many of us losing, yeah. actively losing. And it's it's like, bro, like, how do I cheer on somebody who was already in the 1% getting even higher, right? Because even before this, like, she wasn't worth a billion before this, but look, she had the makeup line, of the lingerie line. She was already a unique one-of-one one type of person in our community. Yeah. So it's like, dog, am I going to cheer on the 1% getting deeper into that one? Now you're 0.01, 0.1, 0.0001? I, I don't know. Who cares? Because at I mean, the end of the day, the bottom percentages have remained the same. It's probably growing. Exactly. That's what I want to say. Is it even something that needs to be celebrated? She was already rich. She was so rich that there was no point that she was ever at risk of going broke. Yeah. So, like, why does it matter that she hit a billion dollars? Well, you know, it's it's symbolic, right? Like, I think no, a yeah, lot I, of I people... I know, but I'm saying, yeah, yeah. why should it matter? Like... Well, you should, no, you shouldn't. But I think a lot of people are kind of falling for that illusion, right? A lot of people... I And I even saw this argument in the comment sections on Twitter, which the comment sections on Twitter are the funniest fucking place on Earth, you know? I, I swear... Um, but I saw a dude who was basically saying like, like it was about this whole Rihanna shit. And, um, it was a person who, you know, I, you need to read, distribute that money. Um, and then basically he was just like, oh, y'all always pocket watching blah, blah, all that shit. You know, the normal, yeah, you know, the normal, um, yeah, the norm. And so basically she said, um, all right, but like, all I'm saying is she just read to redistribute the money more. Like, I'm not telling the bitch to go broke. <laughs> like you worth a billion, give away 900 million. I didn't tell you that nigga. I didn't tell you that. That's not what I said. Come on now. You're not dumb enough to think that's what I said. All I'm saying is if you're worth a billy and your foundation rounded up has given away 50 million, that's about 5%. Bump that up to 10. Right? You're a she's billionaire worth, now. Bump she's worth 1.4. You could give out exactly. 400 exactly. million and you're still a billionaire. Right. But again, I'm not going to ask you to do that. I'm not going to tell you to do that. My whole point is it has to come up. Is all I'm saying. Again, 10% is tithe money, right? That's the minimum. You can go over tithe money. Remember, when you tithe, you can go over. If God being good to you. Tithe. Yeah, if God, damn, who is 20%? What church is that? <laughs> no, no, no. They, they didn't ask for that. That's just what I was given. Oh, right, right. But yeah, I that's what I'm saying. So I always look at it from like the baseline of like 10, right? Like it's like, bro, if you were at the bill, I would give away 100 mil. Like I personally would because yeah. I would delegate 10%. Like 10% of it, I always want to be there. So whatever, the, if I made forty five million last year, take ten percent, four point five, put it to the side, off top, right? Any so, any anything else I do it will be out of the goodness of my see, heart. See, I think that's why I don't think I could ever become a billionaire because I'll you be make giving it away get, from yeah, the yeah, start. Like if I say some miraculous shit happened, I get a hundred million dollars, I'll give away twenty off top, and say something else happened, and I get to five hundred million, I'll fucking give away a hundred million. So, so always, like, I'm never going to make it to a billion because I'm always, oh, the yeah, more yeah. I make, the more I'm be giving back. Plus you, again, you have to exploit someone to get there. And that's yeah, exactly be, like, you can get to very high heights without the exploitation, but then you're going to get to a certain part where it's like, listen, bro, I got a $40 million deal for you or an $80 million deal for you. And you think to yourself like, damn, I'm worth 65 million. You said, this is an $80 million deal. I could double my worth. And niggas like, yeah. All I need. All you gotta uh, do. Is... Yeah. All you gotta do is and <laughs> step on this community. And you're just like ah. And and like once I fuck up, like y'all not gonna hold me down. They said, nope, we're gonna be one of the first ones to speak out against you. But it's it's just for the looks. <laughs> it's just for the looks. We still it's support. We gonna still fuck with you. Hey, we yeah, gonna we still, still be support, paying. But you know, we got we, we got the cookie. Like I said. 
it's you not hard to 80? do the right thing because remember that <laughs> remember that CEO from a couple years ago that he cut his pay so that he could pay all of his employees like yeah. seventy six thousand, wow. and then his company grew wow. by like two hundred percent or something crazy like that. So that guy's name is Dan Price, and I think he's very interesting because he did all of that and still damn near tortured his wife to death. God damn, is nobody on earth a good person? What the fuck, bro? What the you can't praise nobody for nothing. Everybody that's famous is evil. Every single nigga. It was wild though, because I remember hearing about it. Somebody was just like it. You know, like when you see a post and someone's like, "Isn't this the same guy who waterboarded his wife?" Like, oh, literally, I did the, I did like the slow head turn. I'm just like, um, nigga, what? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just looking like, bro, what the fuck is you talking about? Oh, good God, man. Yeah, I looked into it, and I'm like, oh, no, this is bad, Skip. Skip, this is bad. I'm just like, bro, I... But he again, waterboarded his wife? It was it was some wild. She had a TED talk about it and everything. Um, It was it was wild. It's, it's look into that. But, yeah, so that's part of the reason why I don't... Like, don't get me wrong. That guy's right in what he's saying. But you can't speak the message. You're the wrong messenger. Because you, you you tortured your own wife, bro. I don't want to hear anything from you. Like like get lost, okay? But your ideas, yeah, yeah, sure, we'll take those. I would love for more CEOs um to see the uh productivity that comes with paying your damn employees. It's fucking unbelievable. Every time you think there's a nigga out there doing good, there is oh, there's no he beat a, he beat his wife. There was oh. none. He was in college. Uh, he raped the girl. Was unconscious. So up, he was just flashing people. I don't know why. I mean, even yeah. even Morgan Freeman. I heard some shit. Some very oh no, nah, yeah, yeah. Shit. Morgan Freeman is a nut ass freak bull. Let's just <laughs> make that clear. Yeah, a nut ass oh, freak like, bull. Like you can't support nobody. That's why I don't overly say I like anybody. I'll just be hey, listening look, to music in secret because I know one day I some stuff is gonna three. come out. I picked my three, and I've been safe, pretty safe so far. I mean, look, if if something were to ever go wrong with Cisco, A. Marie, and and Jamie Foxx, hey, it is what it is. I, you know, it hurt when you got to kill the niggas you love, but you know, I I, I wouldn't hesitate. I would say, I can't even say Brian McKnight because then does shit with his kids go down, uh, like some years ago. But I think it came out that the son was capping and all that shit was fake but yeah when it comes to rich people and their kids i I feel like a lot of that gets murky because we don't know none of the background we don't know none of the context like in a lot of scenarios it's like listen bro i can't imagine a scenario where i decide to stop supporting my kids you get what i'm saying i don't care if you're 35 like if you're on the streets nigga i'm never gonna allow that to fucking happen as long as i got money like no yeah but at the same time you gotta you said it gets murky because you got to think about the right, relationship. Because we also, how yeah, many yeah. times have I? I bought you a whole apartment. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I rented an apartment drugs. out for a year and you got kicked yeah, out. I bought exactly. you a house and you burned it down, my nigga. <laughs> what more can I do? Like, so yeah, so but even then, I'm look, I'm sorry, but then even then, look, bro, I'm gonna find something. Nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, me. yeah, I'm, no, I'm gonna buy you a trailer house, or some shit, nigga. A like, I, I'm nigga, we gonna get you a house. I'm gonna get you one of them. Uh, you know them like uh the, the those uh shipping container houses. <laughs> some of the <laughs> hey, them bitches stuff. actually look nice. Nah, they, yo, real nice. they got some real nice hard. Like I always felt like yo, if I want crazy crazy money, nigga, I would build a compound of them shits. Like <laughs> I would oh, buy like I'll compound, buy like, this nigga about to start a cult. He oh, said compound. Oh, that's the trigger oh, word. That is not a trigger word. What an that's estate? That would have been word. better. What fuck are we talking about? <laughs> Nigga about to build a compound. He about to start the next no, Waco no. event. Dra- Drake called his place a comp. Oh no. Obio sweatshop. It oh, is no. a compound. What if, <laughs> what if I told you? <laughs> <laughs> See, every nigga is a piece of shit. We already well, knew no, we knew this about Drake. Yeah, we knew yeah. Drake was just a low down nigga. Because I mean, listen, you you hear it in his his lyrics. Nigga have the flyest and hottest choral arrangements, and then you listen to what he's saying. He's basically like, "How dare you fucking move on? Treat yourself with some respect and realize I'm using you." What the fuck, bitch? This, this is disgusting. Like the end of Diamond Dancing, that nigga was. I feel like somebody was knocking on the door trying to get him out the studio. Like Drake, stop, stop, Drake, and the nigga just kept going. He just they kept got the door locked. Going. Ungrateful. You probably be ashamed of you. Like, how damn. do you live with yourself? Nigga said, how do you live with you? I'm like, bro, it's not that deep. 
it's not it, that deep, I guarantee you nobody that he was ever with it has ever been that deep. Drake, it's not that deep, bro. She just want to go out and shake her ass a little bit. It's, it's Drake not is the the black rapper Taylor Swift, because all Taylor Swift shit be about fucking. That's <laughs> man left me. He was a piece of shit. He used to beat me. He was verbally abusive. Drake be doing that, but for women. Yeah, yeah. Because like at a certain point, it's just like, I, when do we recognize this is the energy you attract? Like at, at what point? And that's the one thing I always hated about those conversations because it's like, there's so many conversations that are nuanced that people want to remove nuance from. Right, like there's so many situations where it's just like, like if you keep running into the same type of person, dog, is you you attract it, you are part of, of it. You are at the very least you have to be part of it. You were the common denominator in every situation. You know what I'm saying? If you date four women and they all have the same trashy, shitty personality, come on now, let's address it. Like, uh, yeah, these women weren't great people, sure, but how do they keep getting this close to you? How you keep letting trash people get this close and you know what I'm saying? Like you keep giving trash people this much power over your life. How does that be like, I just I love ratchet bitches, I love crazy bitches, because they be freaks. Like, bro, you're just a dumbass. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah, I, I've heard niggas that be like, yo, crazy bitches got the best pussy. I'm like, bro, what? They're crazy though. <laughs> like, what's not bro? Listen, my thing is I think sane people are crazy. OK, so I don't want someone who is actively crazy, like you are advertising yourself as crazy. That's no, 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 no. That's the last thing I'm looking for, because certain acts will turn perfectly sane people into monsters. Yeah. You know what so I'm saying? If you're crazy from the jump, let me not answer that call now. I don't know. It's, exactly. Like I'm working. I, I can't answer the call. So you mm-hmm. show up to my job and scrape cheater into my car and slash my tires. At that he, point, he'd be mad as hell. Like, damn, why would you just crazy. come inside? And you no, just came inside point, and asked for me. A what perfectly sane person is gonna be crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the other thing. I'm just like, bro, look, y'all niggas like, and that's the whole thing I always say. It's just, and that goes for both, you know, men, women, whoever. It's like, it's so much personal accountability that gets left out of all these equations. And I get mm-hmm. why, because everyone's looking for scapegoats, right? Because in an American society, and I would probably argue global society, but I can't speak for the rest of the world. But niggas don't accountability is lost. It's a lost art. Niggas don't take accountability for things anymore. Shit just ain't their fault. It's the system fault. It's the white man's fault. It's racism fault. It's 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 it's, it's, it's women's fault. It's this person's fault. It's immigrants' fault. It's this person. Like everything is somebody else's fault but your own. Like nothing can happen to you, and it just be that. You know what I'm saying? Like you never run into a guy at the store and he's rude to you, but he's not rude to you just because. He was rude to you. No, he's rude to you because he's racist, right? He's rude to you because he hates black people. It's like, bro, he's, it's a random guy you bumped into who might have been having a bad fucking day. Who knows? Like, I, to me, I just feel like so much of it is people fail to realize where their own actions fit into the equation, right? Like, it's like, bro, like if you cheated on a woman and she went all out and did a whole bunch of shit that was just way over the line. Yeah, okay. But do you see how the cheating brought this out? Like, do you see that part? No, I definitely think it's wrong. You definitely shouldn't be cheating on nobody. But if, say, somebody does cheat and then you start she burning their burn possessions yeah, I'm and listening. you it's, break my PlayStation. Yeah, or... It's 100% wrong. 100% wrong. My whole point is, it's like it's like smacking somebody and then being mad that they pull a gun out and they want to shoot back. He don't want to smack back. He said, no, 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 I don't do the hands. That do is hands. a classic escalation of force. That is a felony. Hey. Some niggas is cool with felonies. That's the problem. Y'all, y'all be dealing with <laughs> niggas that's fine with felonies and not understanding, bro. Look who you dealing with. You wanted a crazy bitch, right? Well, <laughs> the crazy one don't care about the charges, baby. Crazy one about to pull out a knife and try to stab you over something small. Yeah, she gonna stab you over something that you knew she probably would stab you over, but you did it anyway. And that'd be the other part. Like, bro, how you exclusively date women who you you call crazy, and then keep doing shit to like trigger them? Like, that's the wildest part to me. Like, yeah. How you date crazy women and then like just treat it like eh, I'm about to just not call her and just do whatever. Like, bro, what? It's just no accountability. I mean, yeah. Like, I know this person is crazy, but she ain't gonna like she the fun kind of crazy. She's not gonna like <laughs> try to stab me or nothing. Like spontaneous like crazy. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's just gonna it's pop like up. She'll spontaneously tight. pull out a knife. 
yeah, no, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get what people see in it. I like, I understand, like, when you're used to chaos, that's what you just look for. Like, I get that part. But to me, I'm just like, bro, if you, if you have any semblance of self awareness at some point or another, like, it's you, you have got, like, cause to me, I had to do the same thing. Like, I kept running into women with similar issues, not like, you know, crazy women, but women who had similar issues. And I just kept thinking to myself, like, all right, look, bro, this shit ain't no coincidence no more. Like, something's up. Uh, and obviously, the common denominator in one aspect was me. The other aspect was Tumblr. So, um, do with that. Tumblr what is you, just yeah, full of crazy what, people. Do what, with that what you will. Uh, yeah, we already talked about this. It's a digital no, playground. I know. A digital. No, it's a digital menstrual institution. Oh, yeah. It's a digital asylum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, mind you, me included. I'm sure, you know, I'm on somebody's oh, yeah, list I'm, of horror stories I'm somewhere. I'm definitely but. crazy. I'm not on nobody's list for horror stories. I just know I'm crazy inside. I, I was. I'm thinking I'm probably only on one. One actually, because there was one woman that I dated off of um, Tumblr who um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I wouldn't categorize her as crazy, but she was certainly uh, mentally unstable. An at the interesting very... individual. No, 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 no. There was a level of instability. Oh there man, that was just yeah. Um, yeah. And a lot of it was, you know, it was just it was trauma, right? Like from from a million different sources. Um, but yeah, so it got to a point with her where towards the end, I, you know, I had sat through a lot of that shit, tried to help her work through it. She didn't want to work through it. So I got to a point where I was like, well, fuck it. I don't care no more. So I got to a point where I was just dismissive. You know what I mean? Where I'm just like, bro, listen, we already talked about a lot of this shit. You ain't trying to get no help. The fuck we talking about it for? At that point, you should have just left. Yeah, no, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And if you were trying to help her work through shit and she wasn't. That's where we talk about accountability because a lot of niggas will just sit up here and say well what's wrong with that if you don't want to do nothing about it why should i give a fuck and i'm like okay but here's the thing if you don't give a fuck you should leave yeah if you don't give a fuck why are you yeah, why are you still person? here right right exactly so now again i made the mistake and i, and I made that mistake again after that but that's one of those things that i learned where it's like bro once you get to certain points nigga there's it ain't no coming back like when you get to a point to where it's like i don't fucking care no more i don't give a fuck like it's, it's over with, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I had that one, one other time where, like, I was in a relationship with Shorty, and Shorty was just harassing me. I mean, talking twenty calls, thirty texts, emails. You, you, you guessed Man. it. At work, it don't matter where you at. And so I literally spazzed at work. I picked up the phone. I was in the break room by myself, screaming into my phone and shit. I hung up the phone. Like, yo, who the fuck am I, yo? What, what is going on here, yo? I'm yelling into my phone like one of these stupid niggas. Like, what is this? Yeah. I have thankfully like a... never had a relationship like that. In no, my I felt, entire I felt life. so ashamed, nigga. Like, it wasn't, nobody saw me. It was just me seeing myself. Like, bro, look at you. You really in your phone yelling look over some shit that, come. yeah, over some shit that, like, and the worst part was it was over some shit that, like, again, it's a scenario where, listen, she not going to change, dog. So. You know what I mean? Like, she's not even mad over some shit that was your fault. This is just some shit she mad over. And ain't nothing you can do about it. So, yeah, I don't know. But I say all that shit to say um, a lot of niggas got to take personal accountability. Um, A lot of the problems that men have with women and women have with men, vice versa, both ways. A lot of it is just, it's, it's, it's people's traumas getting in the way of shit. And niggas just refuse to, to keep it real, right? Niggas just refuse yeah. to actually keep it 100 with the other person about what they're dealing with and all this other shit. So then you got two people hiding secrets from each other and just waiting for each other to explode, essentially. Literally. Like, people don't know when to get out. At a certain yeah. point, you just have to know this shit is over. Let's just yeah. here. And, and I think people need to also be... And it's funny, because, like, again, a lot of niggas will disagree with this, because a lot of niggas feel like, oh, I think people quit too easily nowadays. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I think... People are quitting just as fast as they need to nowadays, right? Because, again, society's quicker than it's ever been, right? So it's like, dog, you can meet somebody and learn a lot about somebody in a month. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you can follow them on Twitter, talk to them, like, two, three times a week, and you can learn a lot about a nigga in a month. A lot. So it's like, dog, it ain't like in the back in the day where you had to write letters to each other. Y'all was pen pals. So, nigga, it took y'all years letters. to get to know each other. You know, like, like you had to, you had to, you know, decipher Hiram's shitty handwriting and all this. Like, Hiram. You know, 
He pulling names out of the ether right now. Uh, Elijah. You got an old black man named Ezekiel. Uh, Sylvester. There we go. Bartholomew. I'm screaming. But yeah, so like back in the day, nigga, you you know, it was all that shit. But now, bro, you can talk to like you can get to know somebody mad quick. So my thing is you can learn very quickly. Oh, you mm-mm. nah. No, nah, no, nah, you do that thing. You do that thing now. Like, I don't like when motherfuckers do that. You know, <laughs> so it, it's to me, it's like, bro, nah, I think niggas need to leave quicker. That's why the divorce rate is so high. I argue divorce rate would probably be higher if we would go back to earlier times, right? If we go back to the 60s and said, look, go back to the 1950s when niggas got back from the war. I bet you the divorce rate would have skyrocketed with all them broken ass niggas coming home. Are you oh, kidding yeah. me? Them niggas was coming home wilding the fuck out. This, you know how many women if they had the rights at the time would have just been like, look, my nigga, you want some other shit. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. We I understand kids, what nigga. you went through, but you're not about to take it out on me. Yeah, he's like, you know, you don't understand what I seen. She said, no, 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 no. You don't understand what you seen, nigga. That's the problem. That's why you take it out on me. But yeah, that's so that's why I, I hate when niggas do that whole, you know, love was real back in the day and blah blah, all that shit. Cause I'm like, that bro, shit be it? killing me, yo. Niggas used to come home from a 10 hour shift at the steel mill, yeah, drink get drunk Heineken. and then beat their wife. And take the big piece of chicken. And if they didn't beat their wife, they would just come home, get drunk, and spend no time with their kids and their wife. I'm like, bro, you know you can have a deadbeat that still live with y'all, right? Y'all know that's the thing. Yeah. Like you can have a deadbeat parent that live there. <laughs> your dad just your dad just be sitting on the chair watching TV, and you know that's his chair. You know not to disturb him while he in that chair watching TV. And it's eight o'clock on Sunday. That that football game on. You know better than you the know, six. No, don't even look in his direction. Don't say shit to me, nigga. Only thing I'm doing, only thing I'm good for is signing paperwork, nigga. That's it. Yeah, I bring home the check. That's it. But yeah, so I'm like, bro, you know how many families was was just that, you know? Because that's what it was. But let's be real, if women can make their own money and then make equal money and then not have to deal, like that's what I'm saying. Like, you really believe in a perfect world, right, where women can make the much money as we make, not be discriminated against, harassed, and all this shit in the workforce, have their own rights. You think they would still choose? To submit to niggas and be under niggas' reign after seeing what niggas have done with that power for hundreds and hell centuries. It just don't M- make millennium. Sense. It just it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make no damn sense. Like so, that's my whole point. I'm like, bro, no. It's like in a perfect world. Do you think I would depend on the government to to subsidize and pay for my life? No. In a perfect world, I want my own motherfucking money. I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. You know, one day another president get in. He like, hey, look, y'all. I'm stopping these payments. And you're like, what the fuck you mean? Yo, what you mean? What? what he? Why he say he's stopping them? He just, he just say he don't want to pay them no more. Or maybe in a perfect world, there's not even a concept of money. Yeah, word. You just show titty. That's that's how you get out. Man, wait, man, it don't matter. Yeah. It's a different world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Pull up that shirt. It's one of those, he's like, ah. Probably like four or five titties. Shorty flashing one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, those are nice. Um, I, I could do two. I could do two. Yeah, I could do two. It's about yeah, yeah, two. Uh, yeah, that was them two is about right. Two, right? I'm thinking like two eyes, two hands. It makes sense, right? Like three would be pointless because like I, you know, I can't. You know what I mean? I don't uh, know what you mean, but go on. What else? Uh, well, no, nah, I I didn't have nothing else about this uh, long ass spiel about personal accountability and uh. I guess dating. Um, I didn't have nothing else, uh, so I was probably going to get into another topic. Uh, I was talking to my brother about this, um, and I forgot how it came up, but we were basically talking about like nepotism, right? Um, and so, you, obviously, you you know nepotism, right? Like, niggas using their influence to get yeah. family members and friends and shit like that, jobs and opportunities and all that. Um, you know, it's insane that you bring this up, because I was watching like, you know, those those true crime channels on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I was watching a case for this dude in Florida who um, took an AK-47 and he shot through the one of the doors in his house and shot his girlfriend twice. Mm-hmm. Um, and his whole defense was um, she had a dog that he didn't want in the house. He said the dog bit him, so he was trying to shoot the dog and he shot her accidentally. Um, that's not important. None of the shit is important. The Funny thing is, his mother 
was a circuit court judge in Miami Dade County. And yeah, this one's in there. She came to be like his his legal defense, his lawyer, mm -hmm, and she was yeah. sitting in the room with him. And they basically spent like four or five, six hours, and she was just trying to convince them not to charge her son, saying, "Oh well, it's no point in charging him when it's just going to get thrown out anyway. If you charge him and he goes to jail, he'll be a target because he's my son, and I put a lot of people in that jail." And I just thought it was insane that after all this was said and done, she only got suspended for 60 days. She didn't lose her license or get disbarred or anything. She just got suspended for 60 days after clearly trying to tamper with the case. That involves her family member of all. That involves, yeah, that involves her, her son. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, and this, and it's actually kind of funny because it kind of goes into my point, right? I think what I was going to say was that um, I think it's time for black folks to understand that if we are going to attempt to get on even footing here, it's never going to be even, right? But on, on better footing here, a lot of that's going to have to involve lifting people up. And I think the easiest way to do that is through nepotism. I know it sounds wild, right? But what I'm saying is, I think too many black people shy away from nepotism, right? Because it's been ingrained in them to be ashamed of that, right? Like, oh, you only got this job because you're black. You only got this job because of that. You only got that. And it's like, bro, so the fuck what? You only got this job because you the job, to an Ivy League school. Exactly. You only got the job because you know someone's, you know, the HR exactly. guy's sister-in-law. Like, it's the same. My thing is, right? Economically speaking, we've got more black billionaires than other and than ever, right? More black millionaires than ever, right? And so my whole point is you would think with all these black millionaires, black billionaires, it would be easy for them to be nepotists. To, I don't know if that's a word, right? But then put all their people in places of power here, there, here, there, here, there, create a whole network of and that's the issue I feel like that exists in the black community, right? We've got it's it's so fragmented. You don't have enough black people looking to literally just bring hey, listen, others up. Hey, listen, hey, make little, it out of the trenches and that's it. Right. I made it out. Two question interview. One, are you black? Two, you all right? You straight? Are you good? Like, I, I bet, yeah. You got the job then. You got the job then. Like, that's it. Like, and to me, like, because one of the examples was um uh Denzel Washington's son, uh John David Washington. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing an interview where he was saying, like, I didn't want to get in off my dad name and this and that and blah blah. He wanted to forge, forge his own path, right? And to me, it was one of those things, and I and I hated thinking like it because I almost felt like a, a hater, but I wasn't a hater, but it was just like, dog, I hate to break it to you, but you still made it off of your dad's legacy. No matter yeah, how you even if you didn't want to, your last yeah. name is Washington. And, and even beyond that, let's pretend nobody knows you're Denzel's son. Just the fact that Denzel went so hard and put himself in a position to where now he can provide for his kids, that alone is the influence of your dad. Because think about it. If your dad's not who he is, you don't go to the same schools. Yeah, you don't how you get into the Juilliard. Right, you exactly. Acting. You don't exactly. meet the same people. You don't get the same opportunities. You don't have the same. So it's like, that's what I mean when I say, bro, it's nepotism regardless. No matter how you slice it, you're going to, you should be you're getting off of your family's plate. You should be. Exactly. You're getting opportunities that you would normally not receive. Or strictly because, oh, someone sells your family. Yes. Why not? Like, think about this. Like, for example, is. Shit, another perfect example is our, our former fucking president, right? It's Donald Trump. He got a small loan of a million dollars. Now I get it. Now I get it. We all laughed at this shit, right? But let's yeah. be honest here for a second. You took a million dollars and flipped that shit to a couple billions. Now, granted, you know what enabled you to do that? The nepotism, right? You don't like, because you could have turned that million into maybe a two or three, four million dollar company without the nepotism. Just work your ass off. But you would have never made it all the way here. Unless you had the nepotism. And that's what I mean. It's like, bro, we got opportunities to forge generational wealth, I guess, for a lack of a better word, right? Where, bro, look, I put my auntie here, my uncle here, and his kids going to work here. And then, so everyone going to be good coming up. Like, it, even if you're not good at this job, bro, just, just work here for six months, collect your checks, and then leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't got to stay here for life, nigga. If you don't like it here, you can dip. But just come here. Get your money, cash in again, cash in on the nepotism, and then head on out. Yeah, exactly.
But I, I feel like a lot of it is, is like indoctrination. Like black people have been indoctrinated. I was literally about to, to say feel like we they have to tried hurt. to make us feel bad about affirmative action. First right. of all, affirmative action was put in place because y'all wouldn't give us a fair shake to begin with. Right. So why should we feel bad about and something that gives was, us a chance? Was basically pretend to give them a fair shake, right? Like it wasn't like give them an actual fair shake. It was just interview these niggas y'all gotta and hire have, a minimum. Yeah. yeah hire you gotta have at least two black people in your business. At least two. They're like, well, we have 250 employees. Well, you need two niggas. You're like, just, hey. okay. All right. I'll, I'll find a janitor tonight. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, come on. What are you going to get? A black executive? So, like, that was the whole thing. (laughs) But, yeah, so that's always the thing where I I just, like, I I wish more black folks would get past that whole, like, I got to earn this shit. Like, because, you know, black black people, black people have been, yeah, get it out the mud. Black people have been trained, right, to feel like I. When we and, and it's true, right? It's not even like it's it's false, but it's like we got to work twice as hard to get half as much, right? So with that being, uh, with that being in mind, I think some black people take pride in busting their ass, right? They take yeah, pride. No, you're definitely right. In just working fucking hard to death, almost, right? Like not even like. And granted, it don't matter how much they make. If they work, bust their ass, and they make seventy thousand, they take pride in it. You know what I mean? And and this I'm working is, three jobs, and I'm making a hundred grand. Yeah, shit. You know how many people work uh, one job and barely right, do anything? Right. And then you get some of these same niggas who look at niggas like, oh, you making 50? Nigga, you just need to work harder, nigga. nigga Bro, get, I get have a full time yeah. job. I'm not making minimum wage. I'm making salary. I work yeah, that'd be the 40 shit. hours a week. <laughs> like, bro, I work 40 hours with 10 hours just mandatory go get an overtime. Uber. Go get an Uber. Yeah, with 10 hours mandatory overtime, which they don't pay us overtime for because the laws in this country are shitty. What you mean? I work hard, nigga. I work 50 hours a week. It's Why not enough. I, you want to make a hundred grand, right? right yeah, Uber, right. Yeah. 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 And so that's my thing. Like, I just feel like we need to get out of that mindset of, of like, oh, you're not. Nah, if why should I give it to somebody? That, bro, listen, listen, listen. You understand better than black people understand better than anybody, right? Of being turned down for opportunity strictly because of who you are, right? Being straight up denied shit. Like, oh, yeah, we said this would go to everybody, but like, we meant everybody but the niggas. Like the GI Bill, right? Like this was the, oh yeah, all former niggas who served in the war and all that. He was like, yeah, man, that war was crazy. Show up to the office and it was like, oh um, oh y'all we was um, y'all we was didn't mean y'all, black niggas. No, I meant like y'all was. Somebody tell me it was a different war to black people fought in. It was the way we categorized it. That was like World War. Um, the way we ca- that was World War Two Point Five. Yeah, yeah, it was a different. And so only y'all were on World a separate War II mission. recipients are can get it. I'm sorry. Yeah, so it just didn't apply to y'all. Like, but again, so you have so many opportunities where you earned it. You put the work in, nigga. You went overseas. You did all the fucking work and didn't get what you deserve. So, like, my thing is, think about what happens when that happens generation after generation. After, like, you have people who are behind where they should be. So my whole point is, you aren't giving anyone anything for free. Nepotism is just giving you the head start you should have gotten 80 years. Your grandfather should have gotten, nigga, or your great-grandfather should have gotten. I wouldn't even call it a head start. I would just call it a normal fair start. Yeah, the same shit that other people get. I wouldn't even say it's fair because you're not gonna get enough. But my thing is, uh, to me, again, I think that's the only way because again, th- they are purposely letting more black folks become billionaires and millionaires because billionaires and millionaires typically side with the elite. Exactly. They don't, they don't give a shit whether you're, you're black not helping or niggas. You, yeah, they don't you care. You're black no more. You're rich. Yeah, exactly. And that's what people better realize. Once you get there, they don't like it's it's not about any of that other shit. Like, oh, you're gay, who cares? Oh, you're transgender, who cares? Like, I don't care. You make money. Now you make money moves with us. You get what I'm saying? And our money moves, hey, look, maybe we step on some black folks. Maybe we step on some some it's just how we get our money. So you just gotta be cool with it. So once you get all the way up there, it ain't about it's just the money. So that's why I'm like, bro, black folks need to. Once you get there, like when you get to a point where, like, bro, it's like, bro, you should, and that's my whole thing, right? To me, even that is more important than the philanthropy, right? Like, even that, because then now you giving niggas purpose. You know what I'm saying? You giving niggas a yeah. lot more. Like, you don't even you, have to get money out if you put niggas in a position to get money themselves. Yeah, because niggas want to work, uh, and a lot of people have that pride. Where like, like, like I remember, you remember the time they were asking niggas? I think it was on like, would you take like a hundred thousand dollars for free or a hundred thousand dollars you got to work for? And it was niggas saying they would take the one you had to work for. 
because like I think nah, that was just clout for Twitter. I don't think no, but that. like what I mean is yeah, no one's probably really saying that. But there are a lot of people who look down on like quote unquote free money niggas. Like, oh, you got your money from the lottery, man. Oh, you got your money from a trust fund, man. I'm like, bitch, I don't care. I got the money, stupid. And it's the same money you got. I mean, it's been now like that in life forever. Because remember the whole thing about new money versus old money. Niggas been like that forever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, but now we're start. They're starting to coalesce and realize, hey, look, bro, it's still money. So yeah, fuck exactly. It. So fuck it. Hey, look, I don't care if it's new money. I mean, show me how the new niggas get money. Then show me that, Mister New Nigga. And that's what they do. The new niggas who the newest entries into the club will show them niggas. Yeah, so I do this, and they like, oh shit, lingerie. I ain't even think that. What about Victoria's Secret? And they're like, oh, them niggas is washed. And they're like, for real, Victoria's yeah. Secret is washed. Nigga, Google search it. Oh shit, they washed. Wow, I ain't even know it. Uh, yeah, I ain't even hear that shit. That's wild. Damn, I feel like I would hear about that. But yeah, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, to me, I just think that's what it's going to come down to. Because we're at the point now where, listen, our black millionaires and millionaires are going to have to step up for something. Because that's where it's headed. It's already there to a degree, but it's definitely going to get to the point to where it's just, you know, if you ain't got a millionaire or billionaire back in your community, what you going to do? There's nothing that you can do because the government not going to do shit. I don't know what I'm about to do, man. I'm about to Don't. link up with my niggas and throw an Airbnb party and get smacked. Oh, That's oh okay. It. That's all I can do. Hopefully yeah, that'll stop the capitalists. It won't. We're you actively so? supporting capitalists spending money you on Airbnb. So? Yeah. There's no way we can yeah. defeat U.S. consumerism. Well, what if we infiltrate U.S. consumerism by becoming consumers, right? Learn how they maneuver and destroy from the inside out. Hmm? How can That's we a... destroy from the inside out? Uh, listen, I'm not at that part yet. I'm at the part where we're becoming consumers. So I, I decide to consume. I don't think we're becoming consumers. I think we've been consumers all our life. You're a consumer at birth. What, what's your gender? Consumer? <laughs> consumer. That's it. U.S. consumer. U.S. Cons- gender. U.S. consumer. <laughs> Printing on the birth certificate. <laughs> It's like, yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, nah. Um, so for those who are uninitiated, um, it was my birthday uh on the third, which is uh what is this? Two days ago. He's thirty eight. Um, not thirty eight. Listen. If 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 this is what twenty eight feels like, boy. Boy, thirty eight is rough. But um mm-hmm. first and foremost, I wanna say uh I wanna thank God. Um, I want to thank uh, myself for continuing to fight every day, say, what the hell did every you week, do? every month. What did I do? But live, buddy. I lived. Okay, that's whack. Uh, that's whack. I right, just that's stop doing it. Then. Just stop doing it. Then. Okay. Okay. I've been waiting on a reason. No, nah, not in the middle of the pod, though. Not in the middle of the pod, though. Wait till the pod finish, bro. Come on. Okay. All right. Have some respect. But uh, yeah, so uh, we're supposed to be linking up this weekend um, in an undisclosed location, you know. Um, and yeah, it's going it's going to be a nice, nice little vibe, you know. Um, definitely going to link up with a couple of y'all. So, so I actually haven't uh, met um, you in person. Like we we've, we've never met in person. Uh, obviously, you know that. Uh, but yeah, for no, everyone else listening, I thought we had. Yeah, I could have swore we did. Right? Remember that time? Like it was it was like Cabo, I think. Some shit. Yeah. It was definitely, uh, I think it's when we went to the Aquaman premiere with Jason Momoa. You know what it was though? It was all the lizards that they had in the water. They was like spitting this fumes in the air, and it got me a little woozy. I feel like I can't remember it. I think yeah, so. That's, that's, that yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That I don't know why been. lizards was at the Aquaman premiere because there was no lizards in the movie, but they was. There. No, I think it was just a show of support mostly. You know, it was yeah. like, listen, we Water Brothers, like we gotta, you know, we gotta stay the Water box, Brothers. Um. But yeah, so uh we're gonna have a nice little little kickback, like decent amount of us. Uh just chill vibe. Um I was gonna like heavily plan it. And then I kind of was just like, you know what, I might just chill. I might just chill. Like I I, I might just fucking chill. Like, cause I'm assuming most of y'all well almost all y'all got jobs. So y'all niggas have plans every day. It's the work. 
<laughs> so I'm just like, yeah. fuck it. For a couple of days, don't nobody got no plans. We just, what you want to do? It's just unimaginable chaos on a grand the scale. Debauchery. Like debauchery. 50, 60, 70,000 thick drones. We about to cause seventy thousand dollars worth of damage to the and, whole and, New Jersey area. And um, I'm just getting news that we canceled the baby's performance at the <laughs> at the Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's replacing him? U.S. consumerism. I, I knew it. I know. I, I, I knew it. it. You gotta understand. It's Thursday. It's like we're close. So I I, I couldn't get anybody else to step in. Last second. He's the most available usually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so let me think. Uh, where are we at in time? Um, uh, time is an illusion. It doesn't really matter. All right, we're about an hour fifteen. So, um, if you want to push the tier list? I think we can probably save that for um, on, like I, I feel like I don't know when we'll get to that. Um, but I also feel like it has. It's to gonna be a big sense. episode. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it has to make sense. Yeah, um, so, we can't just yeah. randomly be like, "All right, kid, Cuddy too." Yeah, right, oh, yeah, hour and a half into it. Let's spend the next thirty minutes talking about Cuddy. Um, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, uh, so we can talk about one of three things, or you know, two or three things. Probably got time for two. We can talk about the Olympics in general, um, or you know, more specifically, some of the Simone Biles uh, controversy, quote unquote. Uh, we can talk about that. NBA free agency, or we can talk about the Activision or the U.S. Suite, consumerism, or the Cosby Suite. Uh, oh God, the Cosby Suite. Let's talk about that because I feel like that hasn't gotten enough news. People have been yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, Simone sure. Biles to yeah, to yeah. death, and uh, most of the people that have been talking about it are dickheads. So yeah. I don't even gain anything from talking about it. Um, just say so, we're not going to talk about it, but just say so I know where we stand and we support Simone. But you know, dickheads. Uh, we'll be dickheads. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, we support Simone Biles. Uh, listen, to me, my whole thing is like, you a goat, bro. When you a goat, you don't got to explain shit to me. You can it's do what the fuck simple. you want. You don't got to explain shit to me or none of these niggas. These are niggas who have never been good at anything. They're not even good at 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 fucking accounting. They're whatever not even they, good at whatever they do in their real life. Yeah, whatever their job is, they're not good at it. Um, but so okay, so we don't have to talk about. It, but I do want to say this one thing. I thought it was hilarious. You had some niggas who were talking about, um, like, oh, like you have a job where you can just afford to just sit out and whenever you want, and your mental health is this and that. And I was thinking to myself, like, bro, nigga, that's every, every, every job. Yeah, thank you. Every job is like that if you're fucking worth enough to the company. Like, I don't you think know you guys what understand that if a you're a sick valuable... day is or a PTO day. No, 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 fuck that. If you're a valuable employee to the company. When you just, even if you do some shit outside of the bounds, you're like, hey, listen, I know it's, I know I'm not like supposed to be doing this, but like, I need the next three days off. I can't even explain. I just need them off. If you are valuable to their company, as in like you're an all star performer at their company, nigga, they're going to give you the days off. The fuck else they going to do? Don't fuck. Yeah, exactly. The fuck else they going to do? Nigga, you sell the most, you know, telephones here, nigga. Like, if I tell you I need three days off and it's an emergency, nigga, you going to give me three days off. The fuck else you going to do? Lose your bestseller? So that's the thing where people fail to realize, like, bro, you niggas are average at whatever job you chose to do in your real life. She is the best at gymnastics, right? If you were the best accountant in the world, maybe you could tell me about this. Because the best accountant in the world can probably take a mental health day. I bet you. I bet you when he's not feeling right, he could just, nah, today ain't the day, y'all. I'm about to head out. The best accountant in the world is Ben Affleck in that one movie, The Accountant, (laughs) (laughs) where he was fucking, (laughs) he was a black market accountant for the fucking uh what is it the it wasn't the mafia who was it was it it was gangs in mexico right it was, it was the cartel, cartel. Yeah. it was a cartel yeah cartel. that's the best account in the world <laughs> and again well nah he worked for the cartel maybe he don't get a day off but that's different that's different that's, that's one scenario that's different yeah, that's, you work for a certain nigga you can't get a day off yeah. or you but might look, get a life off and you the best at what you do dog i dictate how this shit go it's just that simple um, and so that's that's really it. That's all I had to say about that. Um, but uh, oh, so whew, so let's get to the Cosby Suite because boy, this is this, an unbelievable boy is story. Fucker. Boy, is this some fucker? Like not even fucker. Fucker, he doesn't do it justice. Like you, you, ever, you know what I hate? I hate calling things like weird or odd or something like that. And that's never the word. Like it's like it's 
like despicable isn't enough, right? Like there's a word that goes further than deplorable. Or right, yeah, all of them fucking synonyms. It's just it's just not enough. Right, so for anyone who has not paid attention to this or hasn't seen any of this, because quite frankly, you probably wouldn't have seen anything about this. Activision Blizzard um, is a video game company, right? Um, some of y'all know Blizzard separately. I know, I know personally, I know Blizzard separately, right? Like, when I did Activision Blizzard. take over Blizzard? It's been in the last couple years, right? Or I last few years? It was like last decade. I think it was like 2010, maybe. Was like, it? The, I thought it was um, like 2015, 2016. I didn't realize it was that long ago. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Let me look. It was um 2007. Yeah, 2007. Really? Right. Yeah, 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 that sounds about right. Wait, no, I just looked. I just looked it up. It says July 25th, 2013. Oh yeah, that was a split from Vivendi. Um, let me see. Let me what see. the fuck is Vivendi? Hold on. Is Vivendi who owned Blizzard before? Give me a second. He proposed a merger to Activision's board, which agreed to it in December 2007. Uh, blah, blah. Wow. Uh, so yeah, Vivendi was the one that owned Blizzard. And I've basically, never heard of yeah. Vivendi. So pretty much, uh, Activision's uh, chairman became the new president CEO, and then Vivendi's uh, CEO became their chairman. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, on July 2008, they agreed to. Anyway, this shit doesn't matter. It's not yeah, even the point, right? right? Um, the point is. Two separate companies. They make games. Blizzard's known for, you know, Diablo, Overwatch, uh, StarCraft, StarCraft 2, War- Warcraft, a lot of games like that. Activision, you uh, know. What is it? Uh, oh, yeah, Warcraft. I was about to say World of War, but. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Warcraft in general. Um, so. Okay, so where do we start with this one? Um, Just say the absolute worst part first, and we'll just work backwards from there. Okay, um, so the company's culture got so bad that at one point they had something called the Cosby Suite, which had a picture of Bill Cosby in it that they were cuddled around as if it was a shrine. And they would bring women to this Cosby Suite to, to fuck, pretty much. We should, we should add the pic during this segment. We, uh, no, I don't want, I, don't, I can't, I can't put that picture up there. <laughs> I don't even want to save it on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's going to jail. But, um, so yeah, so this is, so first off, and I, you know, I made this point to you separately. The first thing that was amazing to me about this is that this is in 2013. This is about seven years before any accusations about Bill Cosby came out. So what did these niggas know? Seven yeah. Years how ago? did y'all know this? What? what? Come on now. Come on. Now. He, was, he wasn't trying to buy NBC back then, y'all. Come on. Come on. Give me a new excuse. Quick. Yes, I know. Quick. I love the fact that <laughs> whenever a nigga fucks up, niggas say they was just oh, about to buy yeah. NBC. <laughs> that shit does she kill me. It's hilarious. <laughs> Somebody said the baby was just about to buy NBC. Yeah, that, shit, was happy. that shit had me not. But, right. So these guys knew about this shit eight years ago. Right? Which says something. Says a lot. And what if it's all just a coincidence and they just there was no such they thing. Like, as they just like Bill Cosby and they wanted no, their I'll idol to be in a room where they uh they fuck with the cops. Illicit, nah. They do illicit activities. Nah. How how make do they know sense. about this? Make it make sense. How do they know about this? Because it was an open secret. The same way Harvey Weinstein shit was an open secret. I mean, it's an open way, secret in the. the in the maybe the movie world, but how do fucking game programmers know this? Well, think about they it. are celebrities. Well, you gotta understand, bro. Game niggas are part of the media, no matter how you slice it, right? Gaming is part of the media. Like a lot of people don't see it that way, but it's part of the media. So you never know where you cross paths with other niggas who are in media, whether it be actors, actresses, people who do movies, television, you know, stage hands, the guys who are in the background doing the lighting. You never know who you run into. So I don't know how these guys got in touch with Bill Cosby. I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know. Or if they ever even did. But my whole point is, whether they got in touch with him or not, this paints a very clear picture. One, at the very least, of who Bill Cosby is. So two, I think the other wild part is that if you take a step back from this, right, this was one of many um, allegations being alleged against them in a lawsuit. Um, and so, boy, this lawsuit is is ugly right the lawsuit uh was filed after a two-year investigation right 
So that two was... years, damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this investigation's been going on for a while, right? So the suit alleges uh, sexual harassment, employment discrimination, and it's retaliation on the part of Activision Blizzard, right? So there were a lot of issues here, right? Uh, a lot of issues here. Like one of the first one um, was there was a point where they talked about a cubicle crawl, right? Now that those two words, I was a cubicle crawl. That that doesn't make sense to me, right? These uh, niggas had holes, like 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 doggy doors almost, in the bottom of cubicles. They would crawl through the cubicles, and then what? Right? Like I'm gonna let your, your imagination figure out what happens next, right? Because what happens when I crawl through the little doggy door under this woman's cubicle and I'm right near her feet? What do you think happens next? I'm sure we all know. I'm sure we can all figure it out. So that was nuts. Hey, crawling through, looking at certain things. Yeah, that part was nuts. That's, that's fucking unbelievable to me. Like, who even came up? Like, what kind of disgusting individual just up and does this one day? And what kind of disgusting company is just like, I like this. Let's no. adopt this as a normal thing. But listen, Let's the Google crawl is odd. I think it's weird as shit and it's nasty, but bro, it gets a lot worse, right? Like, I will keep reading these motherfuckers out, right? So, male employees were alleged to have played video games during the workday while delegating responsibilities to female employees. That right there is the most egregious thing. Honestly, that is the most egregious part of this whole thing, bro. You can't, you gonna come to work and then not work. That is absolutely the worst part about every fucking thing here. You not even going to fucking work. You literally just came to cubicle crawl. Right. You came to engage in sexual banter and joke openly about rape, among other things. Crawl under cubicles, get drunk. But not work. How? How is this possible that the company just allowed this to happen? We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Female employees oh, are being held back from promotions because of the possibility of becoming pregnant. Fucking insane. What? Being, being criticized for leaving to pick children up from daycare. Yeah. Yet again, insane. And being kicked out of lactation rooms so male colleagues could use the room for meetings, which makes no... What? Fun. Y'all, ha- the rooms are designated. Female employees, we're going to keep going. And female employees working for World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and supervisors would hit on them make derogatory comments about rape. Why is that the go-to? And otherwise engage in demeaning behavior. What the Um, fuck? Apparently there was a female employee who took her life while on a company trip with her male supervisor. The employee had been subjected to intense sexual harassment prior to her death, including having nude photos passed around at a company holiday party. Oh my God. I've never read Oh man. These ladies are sickening. Wow. Oh my God. They gonna have to make the whole roster in Overwatch gay to blow this over. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is wrong with these people? Yeah. Yeah, no. That's um with I'm at a loss for words. I hadn't yeah, I hadn't read that last one. I think I had heard about everything else here except for that. That last one is the fucking nail in the coffin. Jesus. That is insane. Oh, man. That is. How much is a lawsuit worth and how much Bro, will the female employees the be getting? I don't even want the suit. I don't want the suit no more. They said around 20% of the Activision workforce is women. So I want the 80% still alive to die. That's it. Then we Walker. even. <laughs> then we even. Then we even. Nah. We close to even. No, nah, give me some money too. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I ain't gonna tell you what I want. But we close to even for sure. That is that's insane. I can't. That is insane. It's almost unbelievable. I say yeah. almost because uh, it happened, but yeah. So I mean, listen. At this point, listen. Uh, y'all niggas look up a list of Activision games, Blizzard games. You probably ain't playing many Blizzard games, to be honest with you, unless you're a certain person. outside of Overwatch. What yeah, else are yeah. people playing? No, Nobody's no, playing no. World of Warcraft, I don't think. A little bit, but no. Nah, still, mm. no, still nobody. Yeah. Right? Like, now, if we, it depends where you go. You go to Korea, nigga. Oh, yeah. Blizzard is huge in Korea. Oh, yeah. Niggas is cashing out. Niggas are losing houses and life savings. Does Blizzard do Hearthstone, too? Is Hearthstone? No, Blizzard? I don't think so. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It okay, is? It is. Yeah. But isn't, 
isn't Hearthstone a game from The Witcher? Hmm. No. Wait, what is the no, card? No, no, no. It Witcher? uses the lore of the um, Warcraft series. Now I need to look up what the Witcher card game is. Yeah, I have no idea. But this, this. Is oh, nuts. it's called Gwent. This is nuts. Um, and I think, I think, unfortunately, I think so much more of this. I think like workplace culture is probably like the biggest issue that is like it, it's a hard issue to address because the the pushback you're gonna get is from everybody. Think about it. Like who like this is when it gets extreme this is what it looks like right all these allegations yeah, this when is... it gets fucking wild this is what you see but even on a small scale i have seen just quote unquote frat boy culture at jobs i've seen it i've had supervisors ask me Yo, how old is she so oh yeah yeah oh yeah where who she who she friends with i'm like nigga what bro you Dude, grown she... as shit what? I'm, fucking, yeah. I'm, I'm 19 leave me alone <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? Like, so it, it it's just, this is wild. Like, I, I just don't, to me, I don't even understand how you come back from this. But this is, this was part of the reason why I was saying we need to bring back the corporate death penalty. It's got to come back. Because shit like this has got to get you, get you out of here. Because you, you want to know how niggas come back from this? Uh, oh, I know how they come back from I'm talking most about. Most niggas yeah. don't respect women in general, so nobody cares. Not even that. They they a couple guys resign. They promise some changes. Hire five, ten percent more women and tone oh it down. God. And tone it down. Oh that, that, that's God. that's probably literally tone how it happens. Down. And then they play a, and they pay down. a huge fucking fee, of course, uh, because they're not going to get out of the money part of this. That last like, nah, you're going to have to pay a mm. fucking grip for all this shit. But. Yeah, no, nah, nigga, you got to pay up to this shit. But to me, again, this what I when I say the corporate death penalty, it's like, dog, we need to get to a certain point where it's like, not nah, it. Ain't no, ain't no fucking money you can put up that's gonna pay for this. You got a a woman killed herself because y'all exposed her fucking new pic, new pictures during a company party. Nah, bro, ain't no money. You gotta bring the whole company now. Yeah, shut your shit down. Shut your doors, nigga. Close your doors. Period. That's it. Like it's to me, it's just certain shit. Like nah, bro. No way. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, fostering a bad or terrible workplace environment, if that was enough to get companies shut down, oh, brother, we wouldn't have any companies to work for. We wouldn't have any because they're all fucking trash. In my opinion, I think they're all trash. I think every single workplace has some nutty-ass, dumb-ass culture, and it's just a matter of, all right, these niggas ain't that bad. <laughs> all right, these, these niggas know when to, you know what I mean? You know which people you can, but it's like, the corporate death penalty's got to come back for stuff like this. Yeah. No, yeah, this is this is too much. I mean, everything is terrible, but this is un- an unbelievable amount. Because, like, I've I've worked at a place that had um we had one guy right um and I'm not gonna say the name of this place, but we had one guy who worked there and he was uh, harassing a bunch of the women that were there. Um, and we didn't have that many guys with him. I think there might have been like seven or eight guys out of a class of like 25, 30 people. So it was mostly women. But this dude, like, he just didn't get it right. Like, he just he he would just say and do shit where like you'd hear it at the corner of your eye or you'd hear it and just be like, bro, what? what like, you? you know like, when you think certain shit and you just don't say it? This nigga say it. Like, and I'm just like, bro, what's wrong with you? Like, like there was one time we had one woman where he was talking to her and he was like, oh, you got it. You have a boyfriend? She's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And it was randomly, like randomly. We were, it was me, her, and him all having a conversation. Um, And he wasn't saying much. It was mostly just me and her. And then he just popped in randomly. With it, and we weren't talking about boyfriends or nothing. I guess he was just thinking about it, right? You you have a boyfriend? She's like, um, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he kind of paused for a second. Me and her talked for a little bit about, about this and that. And she's like, well, how, how are you getting home today? Do you need a ride home? And I was like, uh. Oh, my God. Nigga, you're my unbelievably head, like, creepy. In my head, I'm just like, yo? Hey, yo? What's, what's... Are you good? Now, she look at me. I look at her. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. What's, what's, what's... But then, so it was that, and then it was another woman you talked to where she came in, and this nigga, bro, I, I can't, you can't, like, it's, you ever hear some shit so outrageous, you laugh when you first hear it, and it's not funny, but you mm-hmm. laugh, because it's like, bro, I can't, this nigga, like, a woman walked in, um, and was, and he was basically talking to her, saying, like, oh, you got some real luscious lips. Right? Why would you say that in the workplace? 
again, this is a scenario where he wasn't wrong. But you can't say these things, stupid. Yeah, why you don't you say these things. Say that out loud. I saw them. I saw them. They were luscious. But guess what? I didn't say that they were luscious. That's my point. Like, why are you telling people that? Like, bro, listen. I always tell people it's three words you use to stay out of the HR office: good, nice, great. You look good. You look nice. You look great. Only when asked. That's it. Only when asked. That's it. You never lose. And if you want to play it super safe, use nice. Just just use nice. Nice and great. Take good out of the question. Because you look good. No, no, no. Sounds a little too suggestive. You look great. Hmm, there you go. Sounds better. You look nice. You you can't tell me shit about saying you look nice. Oh, you look good. Yeah. Nice right? But again, even that, I don't comment on nobody's physical appearance. I, I just it's just I just don't understand why y'all want to work in environments where you see a woman. Oh shit, yo, your shit poking out that dress today. Damn. Hello? HR. Hold on. Now, nah, hold on. Turn around to the back. Damn. Oh. Right. Like, because, bro, I've worked with a woman. I've, I've worked with plenty of people. Like, I've worked with a woman who had a wagon. Right? And it's like, bro, yeah. I noticed every single day. But I'm not about to say nothing. The fuck are we? What are we? I'm not about to, I'm not about to tap somebody else. Oh, you see that? Like, bro, no. I don't need. No. No. No, nigga. Like, and that's the type of shit he was on. Like, he would literally tap people like, yo, um. You talk to you ever talk to like Nikki? Yo? I'm like, what, what? Like I've spoken to her. Yeah. What, what you mean? He's like, no. Nah, like, you I'm ever like, you like, up with her? Like, yeah. I'm, like I'm like, nigga. I don't fucking know. I spoke to her twice. Who? I don't know. Uh, I'm glad I've never been in any type of environment like that. But this no, is... it got so bad to the point to where we had to go to a. Basically, they they set everybody down and had them do a, a sexual harassment training class, right? Which again. To me, drove me fucking insane because I'm like, nigga, listen, I got the three, I got the nice, great, I already got a system and my shit work. Why the fuck am I sitting in this meeting when this is the guy who's over here asking women if they fucking or telling women they wish? That's what, another what? thing that's fucked up about companies. Instead of we don't want to single anyone else, we're gonna have everyone. Oh, do, oh, no, no, you fucking grab that nigga and say, hey, stop making these comments. That's the issue. You'll because if you have scholar. everybody in there, then you're gonna make it like, oh, shit, I'm not the only one making these. Okay, cool. We all talking we nasty. All we talking freaky. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm right where I, I was need so to. Mad sitting through that whole shit because I was just. And the worst part was you, like, it was one of the ones that was interactive. So they like you had to participate, and I'm just yeah. like, bro, come on, man. Like, and Timmy doing wrong. Like, it's not like I'm like the guy who's like. Oh. Why we gotta learn about how to respect women? Because I don't have to learn. That's why I'm mad. I'm mad because I don't have to learn. I know this already. I already know how to respect women, especially in the workplace of all fucking places. It's easy. It ain't hard. You just you just gotta want to do it. <laughs> like you just gotta respect them. That's it. Yeah, it's not, bro. It's not hard. It's not hard. I promise you, it's not hard. And like that's the part that killed me. Like you got all these niggas who are like you can't say nothing to a woman nowadays because blah blah. I'm like, so what was y'all saying to women before? I just want to know. What was y'all saying before? You saying, oh, damn, you look good as fuck. Disgusting. Like, was you saying shit like that, stupid nigga? Mm-hmm. Like, and not understanding why she didn't she didn't like the fact that every day you came in. She, like, and that'd be the thing. Like, again, the woman who had my job had a wagon. If I spoke my mind, what, I'm going to tell her every day she got a wagon? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You're going to HR immediately. Like, what are you doing? Like this shit just makes no sense, and to me, I just, I just don't understand companies that let this shit rock, because to me, it's just like, like, I don't even know, I don't even know, like, you don't know because you're a decent human being. I don't even like, like, like even simple, like kicking them out of the lactation room so we can use the room for meetings. Does that even make sense to you? Does it even make sense to you? How can a company, which is one of the biggest companies, uh, one of the biggest fucking companies in the world, as of March 2018, it's the largest game company in America's and Europe in terms of revenue and market capitalization. And you motherfuckers don't got a meeting room. You don't got an extra one. You they can't get another one. Rooms. They just another one out. didn't want them bitches in there. That's it. He walked in there. He's like, oh, what you do? Oh, she got her titties out. Hey, y'all, we're going to use this room. <laughs> like, <laughs> What? <laughs> Like, what are we doing? It's unbelievable to think about. Oh, but, so she got her titties out? Oh, yo, yo, come on here. We about to have a meeting in here. But what it you says, can either like, you stay got, or go. You got the male employees and you got supervisors. So what often happens is this is, a lot of times it's disconnected from the top. But in this case, we saw some of the niggas at the top felt the same way. And that's where it started. 
right? But what usually happens is you got like splinter cells of this shit, right? Where it's like the nigga all the way up top wouldn't stand for this, but he don't know because the supervisors it's in this branch, tool. yeah, the supervisors in this branch are all together, and so the people here, and it's just. It's just wild how often this shit happened. And it's just to me, I think the nastiest part is just how little niggas are willing to do about it. Like, I did, like, not even talk tough. Like, that's the part that kills me. Like, you can't even talk tough to the niggas that's doing this. Like, you can, it could be hollow, it could be empty. It's probably going to be empty. But, like, bro, y'all not even going, like, yo, my man, this shit has to stop immediately or you're gone. Period. That's it. No more of this shit, blah, blah. Like, I just don't get it. I just don't understand it. I don't understand. Like, why I have tw- I just don't understand hiring a workforce, and then if my workforce is twenty percent women, then treating twenty percent of my workforce like shit. I just don't get that part. It goes back to what we were originally saying about affirmative action. They had. They don't respect women. They don't care about them. They only got twenty percent because they had to hire the bare minimum, yeah, right? Or they wanted to look good, or they wanted to meet some quota, or something like. Or that. Or the even worst case scenario, they hired all these women just to For fucking. This. Yeah, harass for the, literally for, for the, the for the Cosby room. All right, man. Um, unbelievable. Yeah, I'm fucking believable. Let's. Uh, I, I don't even. I, I would rather talk about anything else than this right about now. <laughs> like this shit is just nuts. Oh, brother. Niggas are truly scumbags. It's unbelievable. For sure. Um, all right, let's see what we could talk about. Uh, Senate infrastructure. No, nah, no, no, no fucking way. Uh, this is, this is an improve of X. Okay, anyway. Um, oh no, oh no, I, I think we might be done. I think we might be done. <laughs> that that next topic that was that was a bad one. What I don't. I don't know what you were looking at, but from your reaction, it sounded bad. Oh yeah, no, it's not. It's a New York Post headline too, so you already know that uh, shit's bad. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, ugh. yeah, no, I don't have anything else. Um, got nothing else. I think uh, preseason starts soon. Football starts soon, so that's dope. Immensely um, excited about that. Let's see. Didn't the uh, the owner of the Washington Football League get relieved of his duties, or the manager Dan something. Uh, is he still there? I believe he last week got relieved of his position. Let's see. He's stepping away from the team. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, remember this one, right? Like this was also another case. When they were in trouble for a lot of the sexual harassment and the same shit. And it's just like, bro, I just don't get how it gets like that. Like, I can understand shit happening under your nose and you don't see it. I can understand that. But when you get to the point to where your supervisors and everybody else is like, you got a bunch of niggas standing around the corner. Oh, yeah, look at that hot piece of ass. Oh, yeah, look at her over there. Oh, shit. And she see y'all and y'all just wave like, yeah. Hey. Yeah, I was talking about you. Yeah, I'm talking about your fine ass, bitch. Like, I'm just like, yo, this is nuts, yo. Like, I, I just don't see how y'all don't see this. Um, they see it. They just don't care until it gets brought up. And then they just say, well, it was never brought to our attention. We didn't know this was going on. You know, we we care, love, and respect women. Um, Just not the ones that work with us. What else? Uh, Stonehenge, Stonehenge rocks are nearly 2 billion years old. Oh, okay. That's just that. Yeah, I put them there. A lot of, not a lot of people know that. I did that. Why you ain't moving since? I mean, they got set up where they was for a reason. I'm not at liberty to divulge what the reason was, but you'll find out soon. See, there was a spider on the International Space Station. That's fucking weird. How's that news? <laughs> was it like a deadly spider? No, it was just a... Uh, golden orb spider. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're catching it. <laughs> no, I'm catching it. No, yeah, I just heard space, it. and I thought about Jeff Bezos or uh, Richard Branson, the International Space Station that's been in space for God knows how long. A spider is has just materialized. Maybe, I mean, I know they change shifts every once in a while. Maybe somebody brought it up there with them. 
Maybe. That's the only thing. I... The if, uprising. We had if to worry nobody about brought it up there. Spiders. No, you know what? Spiders don't actually exist. They just materialize from another dimension in random places. There we go. Mystery Think about solved. It. You, you know anybody that's ever been bit by a spider? Yes, I have. Oh, all right. Well, fuck it then. <laughs> that was the wrong argument to go with. You should have said, has anybody seen a spider walk into their room? Instead, they just appear in random corners of the house. This thing says, he might have been bit by a spider. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> That's such a wild... Have you ever seen... It? That's like saying, uh, have you ever actually seen a bird? No. No ones I saw are real, at least. They're all cyborg. Yeah, we've already been through this. Reagan took care of that. They killed every bird in America. They're all cameras. This is the only conspiracy theory that I actually believe in. I if I actually it. believe it, I don't believe it. Yeah, I just love how funny it is. <laughs> I'm rocking with hilarious. it. Rocking with yeah, it. I like it just because of the fucking madness that it is. The ludicrous ocity of it. The ludicrous ocity. Or no, ludicrousness? Oh, that sounds weird. Lucricities. No, I don't think it's that one. Yeah, no, we'll, 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 we'll get it. We'll go back to we got to shop it. We got to shop it a little bit. All right. Um, right. I'm ready to get the hell out of here. Uh, we can cover the NBA free agency next week. Uh, it'll probably be better, actually, because there'll be some more movement between now and then. Um, yeah, that worked for me. And, yeah, we don't even – yeah, no. We can take Simone Biles off the list. Uh, we support Simone Biles. Shout out to the GOAT. Um, all you other niggas, choke. The only niggas that are even complaining are, you know, the usual suspects. Like why? Niggas like Ben Shapiro, uh niggas on Damn Fox. Mingo. Is that the nigga that had the sign saying some bullshit changed my mind? Uh Dan? No. Was it? I don't know. I don't know who that name. But there's you know the nigga that has the yeah, sign that means it's changed. Yeah. He's a right wing commenter, like uh Okay. Like Ben Shapiro, and he's a dickhead too. Oh, we didn't talk about Cuomo, but it's fine. It's fine. I don't care. Um, I mean, it's the same thing. <laughs> we could. He probably did that. No, ain't no probably, nigga. That if you looked into it, he did it. He did that shit. Um, I love all the people saying it's a computer a conspiracy theory, and Trump just this is retaliation for to last year and how Cuomo was quote unquote disrespecting Trump. I love all those theories. It's hilarious. I'm like, so you mean to tell me Trump can get his niggas to take down Cuomo, but he can't get his niggas to win the presidency or do anything else effective? Just take down Cuomo, that's it? That's the all most you got. The most annoying thing to me is are the people that said Trump has twenty eight Rape allegations. Why ain't nobody do nothing to him? Or Matt Gates got all care. these allegations. Nobody did nothing to him. And you're right. Nobody did. That's also a problem. But we're not going to excuse another nigga just because the niggas that y'all want locked up didn't get niggas him do done. that all the time. Like like black folks do that very often. When Why we is talk Cosby about... in jail when Harvey yeah, Weinstein yeah, 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 yeah. and then Harvey Weinstein eventually went to jail? Or like they'll do the dumb shit. And I'm just like, bro, listen, I'm sorry. You niggas are fighting for a world where, all right, instead of just the white men getting getting by on disgusting and heinous crimes, we should all get by on disgusting and heinous crimes, but yeah, not against me. Everybody, but not against up. me and my people. So how does this work then? It doesn't. It's not. It's fictional, my nigga. There's no way all the black people would get off on the heinous crimes that they shouldn't, and the white people get off because there's gonna be some overlap eventually, nigga. There's like, an <laughs> appropriate way for you to express that. Yes, this person did some heinous acts, but also these people did the same heinous acts and they weren't held to the same, you know, the yeah. same microscope. But you don't you don't excuse the nigga yeah, that is currently being be fighting harder to punish the guys who got away with it instead of fighting harder to exonerate the guy who yeah. did it. All these niggas just saying, but what about Matt Gates? But what about him? Keep his name in the public. Y'all hey, let catch, that shit die catch, down. Look, catch him slipping too. What y'all yeah. talking about? I'm with it all. Fuck, we got enough room for y'all niggas. Come on. You know what it is? It's that the Democrats don't really give a shit. Republicans care about getting Democrats out of here. 
Yeah, a lot Democrats of Democrats like to though. hate on Republicans, but they don't actually care about getting them out. Plus, a lot of it's team sports, right? So you gotta understand, a lot of people they don't actually care about any of the principles listed. They're just like, listen, as long as my team is on the right team, be Gucci. Yeah, literally. Like, as long as my people, are like, I'm never gonna say nothing about my people because again, it's like, it's, again, I feel like team sports is the best way. Either that or like gangs. It's just the best way to put it because it's like, bro, I'm gonna rock with you no matter what. Oh, you dead wrong? Fuck it. We're going to ride out. We're going to ride out. Like, and it's just like, no, nah, I don't have no faith to nothing but myself and my religion. And even then, it's not like the religion itself. It's just my connection with God. It's I've my said, interpretation because this yeah, religion I, shit yeah, is. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was just about to say that. I've I've seen the nastiness of religion, organized religion, multiple times. Didn't we bring I, this up on the last stream about how the Dead, Scre- the dead Sea Scrolls that they had were fake? Cap, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, you'll see a lot of times when you mix that much, you know, influence in, some niggas will realize, oh, okay, I could do something spicy with this. So, but a lot of that stuff, I'm like, bro, nah, I'm not about to play that game where I just start letting shit go because they on my team. Because I know how that goes. You know what I'm saying? Power corrupts anybody. And listen, I'm telling you, it's the same thing. You you could take the most kind-hearted nigga, right, and put him in that Activision situation with a, with a, with a workplace full of nasty, disgusting niggas who was doing the shit they was doing. He either leaves or becomes one of them. It's just that yep. simple. Right? It don't matter who he is before then. You either leave or become one of them, my nigga. It's really just that damn simple. So people fail to realize when that power get involved, and, and you know, if you're a nigga who's always wanted to have power over somebody, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yo, 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 latch on to that opportunity quickly. And that's what you yeah, see. Yeah, you get yeah. some black folks will do the same thing. As soon as I get some money, yeah, now I got the power to tell some of these niggas no. Now I got the power to step on some of these niggas the way I couldn't. When I was down there. So now I'm up here. Now I'm a step the way I wanted to step. So you see it all the time. Like money don't change niggas. It just bring out they, you know what I mean? And bring out your deepest desires. Like when you was broke, exactly. you, wished, you wished you were up so you could prove it to niggas. Like, nah, bro, I'd work hard for mine. You just gotta work harder. You gotta do this. You got and now that the firework finally paid off and you got paid. Oh yeah, it's over. Now you definitely on that shit now. I'm definitely stepping on niggas now, yeah. Yo, these niggas only work 70 hours a week. Fucking bum. I had to work 90 to get where I'm at. In the snow. In the snow. And the heat. The sun was in the sky. Hot as fuck, but it was still cold winds blowing. It was mad. It was snowing, blizzard, all types of shit. It was flooding, I think, too. And then I woke up with 15 roaches on my face. Now, I mean, I hit the first three off. The rest of them niggas scattered. Try to catch them all. I couldn't even kill them all. So many of them motherfuckers. You know what's hilarious? Niggas is making fun of Diddy talking about like how you know specifically it was 15 roaches. And he responded he and doubled roaches. down on the statement. He said, listen, you wake up with roaches on your face. You're going to be able to tell if it's 15 or more. And you know what? I can't dispute that statement because I never woke up with a single roach in my face. So I can't imagine what it's nah, like I, to have a plethora. Man, all right, wake up, right? And take some Swedish fish or something and place a bunch of Swedish fish on your face. Once you get to like six, you don't know how many on there no more. You don't know what it was, did he? You don't know what number it was. It was a lot. That's what you're getting at. I don't even you, believe he woke up with roaches on his face because I've been in some terrible even like housing. <laughs> yeah, roaches don't like people. They be hiding in the shadows. They be scattering. You must have had some of them roaches from the Mimic series that was out to eat niggas. Because I've been in housing that's had roaches. I ain't never had a roach. Roach sees me. They scatter. Yeah, They're roach, not going to sit on my face up. while I'm breathing. Like, oh, no, no, hold on. I'm about to wait for this nigga to wake up. You? Then, yeah, like, what? <laughs> that, don't, that don't make no sense, dude. Now, you might get a roach in your ear. I've heard of niggas. That's yeah. happening to niggas before. I don't, I don't and like, that's. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. No, I'm thank God I have never been in a situation like that. That's like uh, that. you'd be surprised how often that happens. Niggas wake up with insects in the ear and they gotta go to the doctor and then the oh, doctor yeah. pulls one. them out with tweezers. I seen one where a woman had um, what is she? I think she had like these flies. Like it was so I think it was in Japan or um, either Japan or China. But it was a lady like she was like sweeping graves right with like a brush, a broom, and all that shit. Um, she was cleaning graves off and like she dusted up one grave and like some parasite got in her fucking eye and she had a bunch and these niggas like laid eggs in her eye and shit. 
I was like, oh no, to the point where they were on her eyelids and they, they removed like eight or nine of them. Yep. And I was just like, oh no. I'm like, the shit, world like, makes me uh, want to kill myself. <laughs> that's why, you know what? The world is a horrifying place and I don't particularly like it, honestly. That's why I'm trying to get rich. So it can be horrifying, but I'll still be rich. <laughs> How does that help the the horrifying part of it? It don't um, do it. Because being broke is horrifying. When I was getting my hair done uh, yesterday, I was I watched a video of like the fifteen most painful parasites that infect people. And let me tell you, there is virtually nothing on earth you could do to avoid parasites. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. you could wear shoes because a lot of parasites apparently enter through your feet. Like parasites are able to get through Girl, your leave skin. My feet alone. There's a lot of parasites that are like just in the earth, they're in the ground, they're in the water, and they're able to get through your feet and get into your body from there. I mean, people know about the obvious parasites like tapeworms and roundworms and all that shit, but there's some truly disgusting niggas out there that I don't want to get into. Um, because I'm scarred for life after watching that video, so and the eye shit that you just mentioned, that was one of the parasites on the list that uh can cause blindness. The world is truly a awful, terrible place. Um, so is the ocean. I'm terrified of the ocean. It's too deep. What's down there? We don't know. I'm more afraid of the ocean than I am of space. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The ocean is absolutely much, infinitely more scary than space. Because I don't think shit's out there in fucking space, dog. Like, the shit that's required to live out here, you got to have a... Like I said, I think Earth's in a sweet spot. So there ain't going to be too much out there uh, unless we get far, far away and we don't got the tech for all that. We don't got the tech for that, but they got the tech to come here. Yeah, y'all niggas go into them oceans, you're going to find some shit next week, nigga. Promise you. You're going to find some shit in a week. Tops. When I was a kid, my mama used to say, the devil tells you every day what he's got planned through media or some some type of shit like that. And I keep... You said what? What, What channel? That's what I was about to say. I keep seeing different movies and books and comics about niggas drilling too deep into the ocean. And then, what do you know? Cthulhu pop up. You just drill too deep into the ocean and then some type of dimensional rift opens and then just unspeakable horror is released upon the earth. That nigga and, not about to make me scared. Fuck, I'll body that nigga. I mean, yeah, I would definitely smoke Cthulhu because I'm just built different, but I don't want to go through that effort. No, no, no. Rap battle. One round, nigga. Three minutes. Let's determine this. Let's settle this once and for all. Rap battle. You go rap battle in ancient nigga. Eldritch, Eldritch being. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to body him, too. Clear. I wouldn't even rap battle. I would just, like, fly up and just, like, ground by the tentacle and then just pull up. Fly on. up, huh? All right, y'all. I'm, I'm I think it's about time. This man is <laughs> off the room. This thing is about time. I'm going to pull him back down all the way to the bottom like of God the of ocean, war. and I'm going to put him back in that little rift. So which God then, of War uh, cutscene is that? This is the new one. It ain't out yet. <laughs> okay, you let me know how that go, buddy. I'll be at home. <laughs> So, so you are you can win by rap battle, but I can't fly up and grab a nigga. Yeah, I'm gonna win rap battle. He's like, damn, yo, you cook me. I'm gonna come back in a year and battle. He don't speak again. English. He, I'm gonna come back in a year. And, okay. He gotta go home and study. You know? he gone. That shit gonna be. It was hurtful. But like, we're not no reason living to... in reality. Well, clearly we not at that nigga here. Yeah. I don't know. I think that shit can happen. I always like like it's. Even like Evangelion, like the shit that they had, like in that where the angels would just pop up out of nowhere. Like I'm always thinking, like, yo, one day, one of y'all motherfuckers just gonna show up. Yeah, like think about uh how what? niggas view the the Bermuda Triangle, and niggas say that's like a a a doorway to another dimension. That's how ships keep going missing and shit. What if one day, instead of what a ship going missing, some shit comes from there and just starts wreaking havoc in Bermuda? And they could just pop out and go to the nearest island. You? Y'all got cable here or no? Nah? No? 
but he's a giant monster and he don't speak yeah. English, so niggas just get fucking terrified and start yeah, shooting they missiles. Every time he like, damn, I'm just trying to watch the Bulls game. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just trying to figure out what channel they got the Bulls game on, bro. There was a yo, there was an episode of Rick and Morty. I don't know if you watched that. You probably don't, but there was an episode of Rick and Morty where they had like a, a giant alien monster school, and their whole goal and their job was to go to different dimensions and spread the truth of the cure for AIDS, right? And so the teacher was like, All right, so when you get there, you know what you gotta do. Just tell them the cure for AIDS. And then the nigga went through the portal and the teacher was like, well, this portal is untested. So we don't know like if you're going to be stripped of your knowledge. You don't know how to talk and you don't have any clothing. And then the monster got there. It's like, all right, here's the cure for AIDS. But, you know, he was just roaring like a monster. And then he immediately got his fucking head blown off. Yeah, I feel like that's our first problem. Like, they're probably saying one of the peaceful niggas, like, yo, y'all know how to get the Jets game on TV? And, like, we he would just kill him. Gets new. Yeah, we would just fry him. And then they'd be like, why they kill my mans? And then they send the real niggas, and then it's a problem. Like, And then we're, we're done. We That's it. And the real niggas probably don't ask no questions. I mean, to be fair, yo, a jillion, a jillion, a jillion, a, a giant alien crab creature with claws and horns and scales that nigga is a threat. Not to mention, he should know better than to just pop out. Like, it, yeah, you, you, you gotta, bro. You asking bro. me about the Jets game? You know enough about our culture, bro. You can't just pop up and and just just be you, your gums be flapping and it be shit happening. All the types of sounds niggas ain't never heard, but you can't do that. Send a message first. Say, yo, I'm about to come in. I'm about to change your whole fucking civilization, yo. Yeah, Words of mother. Talk, talk to me telepathically, yo. Before Something. you knock on that door, yo. Like, I'm going to be in the kitchen like, yo, hub, is somebody outside? I'm going to fucking text him, yo. As soon as you pull up, if you don't announce, you're getting blown up. Nigga, you got to let me know. You, I should, you get a text message and the number just say question mark. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, man. Let's, uh, let's get the hell out of here. I was never here to begin with. Sure wasn't. I wasn't here neither. Only thing That's that my own life. Is U.S. consumerism. Thank you for listening. Thank you, U.S. consumerism. No, I won't. But uh, thank you for listening. I uh, hope you guys have an amazing day, amazing weekend. Y'all stay safe. Um, talk to Joe Biden. I about to say Joe Biden. Talk to Joe Biden about those student loans. And uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. All you need. That's all you need. That'll do, pig. That'll do.